gentlemen, and welcome to the October 17, 2017 uh, Conservation Commission for the Town of Milton meeting. Uh, as a matter of formality, we have a couple of things to go over. One, everything is recorded here uh, pursuant to the uh, open meeting law, and so if you'd like to address or ask a question, then uh, I'd ask you to identify yourself, uh, and all are welcome to make a comment or uh, ask a question. Also, as a matter of formality, we uh, always introduce ourselves. My name is John Kiernan. I'm Arthur Doyle. Ingrid Beatty. Jackie Bowen. And first on the agenda is an informational issue, Neponset River cleanup issue. Welcome, sir. Good to see you. Thank you very much. My name is Ian Cook, and I'm the executive director of the Neponset River Watershed Association. And uh, back on September 23rd, we had our uh, annual fall in the Ponset River cleanup, which was a wonderful event. We had actually 161 people signed up to participate and uh, cleaned up the river between uh, sort of the Capon Street area near the new DCR Bridge all the way up through Milton and Hyde Park to, uh, to Paul's Bridge. Um, we got about 100 tires out of the river, numerous shopping carts, and about 10 tons of debris, um, which, ten? Ten. about 10, uh, which thankfully was a significant decrease from past years, which I think is evidence of the progress we've been making in clearing a, a long-term accumulation that's, that's not coming back. Um, the reason I'm here tonight is because we also had a, uh, uh, an unintended mishap uh, along a wetland resource that I wanted to bring to your attention. So one of our sites was Paul's Bridge, where we had a crew of volunteers who was trying to remove a large uh, log jam that was lodged in the bridge. And on the Neponsa River, you get this sort of uh, uh, tapestry of logs and sticks and trash and shopping carts that gets all tangled together. It's very difficult to remove. Um, so the volunteers working at that site uh, were intended to have a chainsaw at their disposal to do that. Due to some confusion that morning, they actually ended up with two chainsaws and more volunteers than we expected them to have. So they finished very quickly. And as our two site captains who were supervising the work at that site uh, were trying to finish some things up at the river, several of the volunteers with the chainsaws began walking back to their cars and spotted uh, Kennedy Brook, as they were, if you know the little parking area at Paul's Bridge. Um, Kennedy Brook is between the canoe launch and the parking area. And for reasons that, that aren't completely obvious, they decided, they saw Kennedy Brook and said, oh, let's tidy up Kennedy Brook, um, which is, uh, which was not part of our cleanup plan. Our plan is not ever to remove, uh, you know, vegetation from the shoreline or even to remove woody debris from the water, even if it's dead, simply because that's an important part of the aquatic habitat. But these folks who were out of earshot of their, of their uh, volunteer supervisors took the initiative to do this. And what they ended up doing was there was a section of the brook essentially between the road and the river uh, that's maybe 75 to 100 feet long where they kind of went along the brook and kind of took out um, uh, vegetation that was sort of leaning over the brook or was in the brook trimmed it uh, and set it uh, on the lawn uh, next to Brush Hill Road. Um, most of the material they, um, pretty much all, well, all the material they took out was sort of woody material. Most of it was pretty small, one inch, two inch kind of material. Uh, there were a few larger pieces, three to four inch material. It was all um, brush as opposed to cutting of trees. The species involved were uh, silky dogwood, green ash, box elder, speckled alder, tupelo elm, buckthorn, and multiflora rose. Uh, and we felt we wanted to bring this to your attention because it, you know, it, it happened in an area of your jurisdiction. Um, and we also just wanted to be clear that this was a problem of our creation and not um, something uh, initiated by DCR, who I, I think often gets blamed <coughs> when things like this go wrong. Um, so our uh, suggestion that we conveyed in an email, which we have implemented at this point, was to take the, the trimmings and basically redistribute them in the, uh, the area that was disturbed to try to um, reestablish some sort of brushy cover for wildlife or insects that are in there. We put some of it in the, in the waterway um, so that we would have some of that woody debris in the water. Um, and we also uh, placed it, 
I, I, I think one of our biggest concerns was that this might, uh, with the trimming that happened, it might look like to an uninformed DCR mowing crew person that they were supposed to mow this area. So we also put woody debris in the area that we didn't want DCR to start mowing. Um, so at this point, that's that's what we've done with it, and I'm here to uh, essentially to apologize to let you know that we are planning to um, change some of our procedures in the future to make sure something like this doesn't happen again, and uh, to see if you feel there's anything further that needs to be done about it. I think the at the end of the day, uh, you know, they did not kill any of the vegetation. It's all things that will grow back fairly quickly. You know, this was sort of mature, brushy material. Um, but it was a mishap that we felt we should bring to your attention. Thank you uh, for doing that. And I acknowledge receipt of the email. And I, I did have a question initially, and I, I think you've answered it. Um, but I think your intent was, and it sounds like you've already done it, you redistributed some of the debris back into the waterway, which surprised me. It sounded like it was going to be a... I'm not suggesting Kennedy Brook is navigable waters, but um, it, it sounded counterproductive. Um, and I, could you explain why you're putting debris into the river? Well, it, and, and this maybe gets to the root of, of the problem we had with the volunteers who, who sort of saw a cluttered looking stream and thought, oh, we should tidy that up. You know, one of the, from a habitat standpoint, and Kennedy Brook is a cold water fishery, um, so from a habitat standpoint, one of the most important aquatic habitat features is having woody debris in the stream. It creates a sort of more complex aquatic habitat. You know, the fish like to hang out in it. It uh, provides a food base for insects. And, um, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, there's an example of some past, some recent projects actually that Trout Unlimited has done where they've taken trout streams and done nothing to them but put some wood back in them and seen the number of fish in the streams double. Um, so it is an important part of the, the system there. And we did not everything that was put back was put back like literally in the stream. A lot of it was, you know, along the bank and, and so forth. So that was the thinking. If you'd prefer we undo it, we were, we're happy to undo uh, it. No, I, I want to I go with an expert uh, opinion as to what's appropriate. It just sounded like debris and in the stream didn't make sense to me. You, yes. You've explained it, but does it, does it not create a, uh, a potential dam or buildup of trash and other woody debris? It, it could. I think it's unlikely to be a terrible problem here because, you know, most of the, the kinds of trash that we see on the main stem of the river that cause problems are when you get um, large pieces of trash, like a shopping cart that gets a branch through it, you know, creates a jam that's much more difficult for nature to deal with, and then it starts to accumulate litter and so forth that's coming down the river. In the case of Kennedy Brook, there's not a lot of... Um, shopping carts thankfully being put into it and there's not a lot of sort of loose litter that's being washed down the stream as part of stormwater runoff so i think it's unlikely to be too much of a problem but it's it's actually something we could keep an eye on all right and one other question uh, you did indicate that a lot of it was underbrush uh lower story vegetation uh, but you also said three to four inch caliper trees, saplings. We do have a performance standard uh, in terms of replacing, uh, which we try to be pretty uniform on. Um, and I'm less concerned with some of the, you know, one inch saplings, but I am concerned with the three to four inch caliper trees. Um, do you have any kind of a replanting plan? We don't, and, and honestly, we debated about whether we would want to do that. And I think, you know, our, our instinct was, that we haven't actually killed anything in the area. You know, we haven't removed roots. Everything that was cut was actually cut fairly high, and we think it will re-sucker quite quickly. And we're a little reluctant to get into that area where we're, we're, all this happened very close to the bank. I mean, it's not, they actually didn't sort of clear cut the riparian. It was sort of like mostly within, you know, two to three feet of the water's edge. Um, and our concern is that if we get in there and start to have to try to dig a hole to plant something, we're going to be, you know, breaking roots out of there and creating soil that's loose. 
Um, again, if the commission prefers that we do that, we, we could do it, but our, our first instinct was sort of to let it go back to, uh, to what it wants to be, which I think will happen fairly quickly since nobody will be maintaining it in this new condition. So looking at the three to four inch tree, these weren't cut down, which I assume would kill them, but rather trimmed? They were just kind of visualize what, what so happened. most for, so for example most of the things that were three to four inch and and I I didn't make an exhaustive inventory of exact sizes of everything but for example I can picture there's one um, and honestly I'm not sure what species it was but it was a, a little clump of um, things next to the stream that was three to four inches that was probably a silky dogwood or something like that that likes to have very wet feet. Um, that was cut, you know, maybe a foot above the ground. So there's kind of like a foot tall stump sticking up from it. And from what our environmental scientist has said, he's confident it will sucker and re-sprout fairly quickly and that we haven't, you know, actually killed the, the root system or the plant. And last, do you have any photographs? Uh, I do have some photographs. I did not uh, bring them. I can send them to you if you'd like. Okay, because we might want to take a look at it to see if uh, it does, in fact, re-sprout. Um, and, and I appreciate you not digging into the bank, which would probably create an erosion problem. Um, but I would like to see that there's some regrowth in that area. Questions? Spring sidewalk. Spring sidewalk. That's good. No, I, I just appreciated your uh, comment toward the conclusion of your remarks that Looking for the no no um, herbicides were painted, et cetera, so that all this will in all likelihood come back to regenerate itself. So th thanks for that. Thank you. So I didn't see the email. Uh, did the email have a list? You just recited uh, the, the list. email didn't have a list. I it was only after we went out to to move the brush around that that I asked somebody to put the list. Can you together. send us a list? Sure. I mean, some of the stuff, of course, we. I'm happy that you cut down like the multiflora rose, but right. some of the other stuff, and, and, <laughs> maybe and, not so happy. And when we put things back, we did not put the invasives back. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. So uh, we'll send you a list and we'll send you some photographs. All right, and then maybe we can, as Arthur suggested, take a look at it in the spring and see how it looks. Sounds uh, good. And sounds if you feel at that point that you want something more done with it, we'd be happy to do that. So list yeah. and, and the photographs is the way it looks right now. Correct. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Are there any questions or comments from uh, about it or members of the public? All right, well, uh, Ian, we thank you for coming in and uh, protecting DCR, <laughs> which I'm sure they appreciate. Uh, lots, lots of people are out there making DCR look bad, so you know, we don't want to contribute to that. So. That's good. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Next on the agenda is Notice of Intent, 75 Edge Hill Road, Cunningham Ooh, Pond. I get the middle bow? Or I get one bow? Good evening, I'm Attorney Bob Sheffield of Melton, and with me is Bruce, Bruce Alexander. Alexander. Chairman of the board at Cunningham. And Paul Jensen from uh, the engineering firm of Weston and Sampson. Uh, we had some um, challenges with the, with the uh, pond this year and we want to uh, take measures to uh, improve the quality of the water. Um, and uh, we have a proposal in front of you. Uh, in addition to the proposal, we also are planning to put a berm in because we feel that a lot of the uh, problems with the water related to salt uh, coming down from uh, the area of the uh, ball fields. Little League ball field. No, not the Little League, it was the senior ball field. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. And um, that if we uh, put some kind of a grass berm uh, there, it will uh, avoid the uh, uh, flotation uh, of materials. And the real problem with the water uh, was the visibility uh, insofar as uh, we're required to put a disc 
down, what is it, three feet? Four feet. Four feet, and be able to see the disc. Well, it's black and white. You have to see both the black and the white, apparently. Yeah. So, Bruce, this would be along the end of... The north side of the pool. Right, with the... Where the ball yeah. field slopes down into yeah, the marsh. Yeah. Most of it goes into the marsh as it is. Right, but what some we, comes down to the right. What we'll be trying to do is divert what doesn't go into the marsh over into the marsh where all the rest of it goes anyway. Uh, but as I look at it, we have not had an, in, had an engineering study, and we will have an engineering study. But I think it will be within 100 feet of the pond, so we will probably be coming back to you when we have a design and an engineering study. But I'm, I'm thinking that if we went farther than 100 feet from it, there would still be some hill below it, which so it wouldn't be quite as efficient <coughs> as if we put it closer to the pool. Having lived there for many years of my life, I think that's a great idea. Well, and it's 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 diverting water. It's not damming water, and it's just changing the, the flow a little bit. All right, for the public's benefit, there is a, uh, an area of concern, and that is both the clarity of the water and the uh, purity of the water. And I, I have been consulting with the health department, and I wonder if you could explain the issues that have come up uh, between Cunningham uh, and the right health, Board of Health. All right, we, we've, we've had some trouble with the clarity, which occurred after two cloud bursts or about four days apart. And that's why we thought, we think it was the runoff mostly that caused it. And the water turned green as opposed to blue. That's, and we had, this. Is, you, you might get a kick out of this. <coughs> Somebody said that they, uh, uh, they opined that it was metals in the water. That maybe we had pyrite coming up or whatever you, yeah. So we had it tested at the lab, and the lab laughingly called us up, sent us the report and said, by the way, you have, less metal in the water than the drinking water in Milton. <laughs> we got that in writing from them. But in any event, that was the cause. We but what was it in the runoff? I, I thought you said salt. Well, they, didn't, they couldn't find phosphates, but we think there might have been some because we have fertilizers on the, football, on the, the baseball fields, but we don't know that it was. It could have just been the uh, combination of pine needles and pine cones and acorns or whatever else came down in the cloudburst and went right across the deck and into the pool. We vacuum it, we you know clean it all out. You don't see that stuff after we do that, but that doesn't mean it hasn't dissolved into the water. In any event, after that, we put uh, enzymes in the pool and what they call clarifiers, and I'm not quite sure what the chemical makeup of those were, but it was supervised by experts, and the pool cleared up to be just what it was before and what it's been like for all these years. Uh, but at the end of the dock, where people jump off, it's eight feet deep, and they couldn't see the disc at four feet. They probably, they never had tested it before. This is the first year they've ever tested it, the Board of Health has. Uh, it's, it's the four foot rule is part of the so-called camp regulations, where if you have a camp, you have to be able to see the water at four feet, see the disc at four feet, which is kind of interesting because I'm sure they can't at Houghton's Pond. <laughs> we used to call it the inkwell when we were growing up. But in any event, <clears throat> once we clarified it, we were very confident that it is, was no different than it has been for the last 50 years. By the same token, our system uh, of filtration was on its last legs, or is, it was almost uh, 30 years old, and so we thought we could maybe improve the water, which was currently being uh, turned over every, at, at 1,200 gallons per minute. And with this new filter system that we're going to put in, it will be turned over at 2,000 gallons a minute, which we hope will maybe make it clearer, but it's, we, we are convinced that it isn't any less clear than it ever has been once we got rid of the issue caused by the cloudbursts. But in any event, um, that's, 
that's what the problem has been. They, ca they came and closed the dock. Oh, that's all they closed, is the dock where people jump in. <coughs> the chairman of the Board of Health on our saying, you know, the kids love this and we're getting people saying we want our money back, which we don't care about, but they did because the 13-year-old couldn't jump off the dock. So uh, what we are doing with this new filter system and this new uh, whole project, we're going to put LED lights at eight feet and at four feet right at the end of the dock. But I, I digress. The gal, uh, the chairperson, Roxy, at one point said, if you put three people on the dock, you can still use the dock, even though they couldn't see the disc. We thought that was a very practical solution. Three lifeguards I'm talking about. And the idea was one person jumps off at a time, and when they're on the ladder, the next person came, with three lifeguards watching. She approved that for a weekend, and uh, that's, but it was temporary. And they, she didn't rescind anything. It was only approved for three days, and they never came back until the last week, and then they couldn't see it at four feet again. We could. Our people could. In any event, there's a bit of a, I think, a turf battle going on because they used to have control and now you people have control. But that's just my personal opinion. In any event, the new system, which Paul will describe, is the state of the art, and it's going to be much improved and we'll turn over the water that much faster. All right, Paul, before we begin, to put in context, and I, I've had a number of conversations with personnel from the Board of Health, uh, and they're concerned, and so that the public understands this. When the Conservation Commission <coughs> changed the designation from pool to pond last spring, it was at least my understanding that there would be no change in the uh, sanitation standards, uh, hygienic standards, um, and I just assumed that the same test would continue. It did. As I understand it now, there were, for a pool, there are two tests, one for chloroform and one for E. coli. Mm -hmm. And for a pond, <coughs> there's only one for E. coli. So that one of the tests under the state regs has been dropped. Is that correct? But we're still do doing it every single day. First question first. Yeah. I am I correct? I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's, I think the only test is probably E. coli. I think, I think you're right. All right, that's my understanding. I think you're right. That would mean that the Board of Health can't test for chloroform, correct? I think that's true. The, the, they're, what they are going to test for is clarity by looking at it. Well, that's, that's a separate issue. The okay. first one is just a bacterial count. And I, I want to make sure that the same standards that were imposed before are still imposed. They are imposed and they're improved because the chlorination system will be computer controlled without any human intervention and the computer will say, you must add it and then it's added automatically. Is that correct, Paul? Yep, and you're still supposed to check it uh, manually in yep. addition to that. Why don't we ask Oh, they Paul. still test. Why don't we ask uh, All right, but I, what I'm concerned with is that my understanding was that the health department was told that they could not test because they didn't have the state authority, if it's not a pool, to test for chloroform. By and that whom? was concerning. By whom? Well, I was told by some person at uh, Cunningham. Not to my knowledge. It's so you concerned. wouldn't mind then if we, to the extent that it's a a pond and it is spring fed yep. and you're adding something to the spring fed water hopefully that would be you know chlorine or bromine chlorine, or something yep. um, that's an alteration so we would have some kind of control do you have any objection to us being the, the conduit to implement the same standards that would in testing no objection whatsoever no that would be furthermore fine. instead of we can send the test to you as well as to the board of health we test it every day. All right. I just want to make from a jurisdiction point, because they feel that they've lost some of the jurisdiction <coughs> that yeah. they had. In one of the areas that they were concerned with was the, the lack of control over clarity. That's it. Well, to the extent that we have control, would you have any objection if we implemented their standards as part of our notice of intent? To, to I mean, this our order of conditions. I'm to sorry. this extent, the state regulations, if they were still doing it, we were going to have to turn over the water every six hours. We can't. <coughs> Pool's too big. 
that, that's really, you're leading up to my next question. I, and I'm doing this, Paul, so that I give you a chance to respond, because some of these are capacity no, questions. I'll be quiet. No, no, I, no, I, no. You, you've been right on the money. You've been perfect. Um, but as I understand it, the state regs now say that the water has to be turned over at every eight hours, but they're moving towards a six-hour standard. That is correct. Uh, standard. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's been implemented yet. Is that, am I correct? I think that's correct. true also. It's a proposal. All right. And there was a, a time when I think Cunningham Pool could do it in 10 hours or 12 hours or something of that nature because of its size. And then, again, this goes historic for this year, this past year, that there were times when your pump system wasn't working uh, to full capacity. Not at all. What so. wasn't working was the gauge. The flow meter. The flow meter was not working. Okay. They whacked it and it worked. <laughs> I mean, that's really... We're fixing the flow meter, I hope, right? <laughs> <laughs> the flow meter's still there Everything and it was working up. Yeah. But that, that, again, right. is, I wasn't there, but that's what I was told. All right. Well, <laughs> as I understand it, uh, there was, you know, some difficulty uh, achieving the state standards in terms of complete water turnover, the volume of water completely Absolutely. turned over. Now, oh, if, yeah. as I understand, you've got a 2,000 gallon per minute uh, system that's coming in. That is correct. correct. Am I correct that if you went to 2,300 gallons per minute, you could achieve the state standard? No. That's my question, Paul. I wouldn't ignore it. The answer no, yeah, is no. You could, right? Well, their system now is doing an 18 hour turnover, and we're putting in a 10 hour turnover. But we're sizing our pipe a little bit bigger to handle an eight hour turnover. Um, so if the 10 hour turnover still had some water cloudiness issues next year or the year after, they could add a second pump and a second smaller different type filter to supplement it to get it to eight hours, um, which would be the state code for pools. But it would not bring but, it to six hours. But it would not, which isn't the regulation yet anyways. Um, but we feel that since the, right now their turnover is 18 hours, and they're going to 10, it's almost double um, the capacity, and they shouldn't have any water quality uh, clarity issues. Um, to get it to eight hours, you'd go from 2,000 gallons per minute capacity to, was I correct, it's 2,300? Probably. Um, the, o the other thing is that the, the pool, the pond, which is, they can run it at different depths and elevations, depending on if you know if if they if if it rains or what or whatnot. So the volume of the of the pond can fluctuate from 1.1 to maybe 1.4 million gallons. But usually they've been running it around 1.1 to to one to 1 1.2, which um, lowers the turnover rate. So they have more filtration less water so it goes through the filter quicker. So if you assume if you assume it's 1.2 million gallons, um, then 2,300 gallons a minute, let me do the math. Would be a little over an eight hour turnover. At 23, so what would an eight hour turnover? Eight hour turnover would be at 1.2 million gallons. Five hundred gallons a minute. Now, I think you indicated, Paul, that you could, uh, if, if the water clarity didn't work, you could put in a like a, a backup system or a supportive <coughs> system. A supplemental pump. System. Yeah, supplemental we're putting system. in we're putting in larger pipe, so that if they wanted to add a second pump, right now they're, they're having a they're, we're putting in a, a huge pump that does two thousand gallons a minute and a huge filter doing two thousand gallons a minute. Hypothetically, they could put in a second pump doing 500 gallons a minute and a second smaller filter doing 500 gallons a minute and run it through the larger piping that we're going to be installing. And that's how they could get to the eight hours if they need it. Why, why, why not? What, is there a cost issue there? Well, let me add one thing. We currently can put everything except that 2,000 gallon containment tank 
in our current filter house. If we had a second one, we'd have to build another filter house, a second one, or an, uh, an addition, or whatever you want to call it. Would not fit. <coughs> okay. We initially thought we were going to have to raise the roof on our filter house or put a dormer on they were talking about. They did some new measurements and, and looked at the pad and tore up some of the pad, and we can have it all within our filter house now. The, 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 re the reason they did the 2,000 gallon a minute filter is because that's, that's the largest filter available of, of um, DE, yeah. Yeah, per, per, yeah per, it's, it's perlite, it's the newer version of diatomaceous earth. But 2,000 gallons per minute is the largest filter available. There wasn't, a lo there's no larger filter available. After that point, you have to add second, third, fourth filters. Um, but this, this filter um, takes out smaller particles than sand filters. The, diatoma the diatomaceous earth or the perlite filter takes out particles down to two microns two to three microns. Sand filters only take out particles down to 30 microns. So the filter we're putting in is gonna take out the very, very small particles that can lead to water cloudiness issues um, that the sand filter wouldn't be able to take out. So that's why we felt that um, the 10 hour turnover with a 2,000 gallon per minute higher end diatomaceous earth filter um, would be able to take the, wa the, water, qu the water clarity um, issue uh, out of the equation. Well, I say I should never ask a question, don't know the answer, but I don't know the answer to this. How many microns are we cur currently filtering down to probably with our current system? Uh, it's, it's such an old, uh, I, hypoth I mean, um, is it hypothetically, if it was new, probably probably the three three microns would. But, that, it, but it's, so age, huh? it's so old. It's so old. There could be holes in the um, fabric. Oh, there is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what uh, I understand that there was a, a board of health meeting, and uh, I think it was informational. Um, I intended on going, but um, I was unable to do so. A, was there a discussion with them about this very issue? And B, did they request that you go to 2,500? No, I, Dallas, what perhaps. they're going to do is recommend that we turn over the water every eight or then six. They will be recommendations, that's all they can do, and that's what they have said. They, they called me on the phone and asked, and I said, I said we can make the pipe bigger so that if, if they need to add it in the future, they can. Um, and the woman I spoke to seemed happy with that um, answer because originally she was told that we were gonna only gonna install pipe for 2,000 gallons a minute. I said, we're gonna make our pipe a little bit bigger so that if they, if anything happened and the, and the water got cloudy, you know, next year or the year after, then they could, they could add another filter or another pump um, eas easily. What would prevent you from doing that now? Is, is it money? I mean, that's a, that's oh, a legitimate answer. Money is answer. a huge issue. Money is an issue. It's <laughs> not the key issue, but it's a serious issue. The other thing, too, is the filter and system that we're putting in now is the largest that they make. Well, I, I understand that, but that's why I'm asking about the, stuff the, the size of the, fil the size of the filter room, the, amp the amperage going to the building. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, the pool regulations are designed for YMCA or high school pools, et cetera. This Cunningham Pond, which has existed for the past 100 years, is so different from that that the regulations just don't apply. Oh, it is, I, and, and I understand that. And first of all, I, it, I, I hope you know from my perspective personally, and certainly from the commission, we have huge regard and respect for the Cunningham Foundation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a tremendous amenity to the citizens of Milton. Uh, I think that the Board of Health has indicated some legitimate concerns, and there were two occasions when I understand they closed um, July 21st or July 22nd. There was a, a closure for a short period of time, and then at the end of the season, I think uh, you closed a couple of days early, something like that. Well, no, <laughs> when you say closed, <coughs> closed the dock. The dock, okay. Uh, yeah, just. Um, and 
I, I just, what I'm looking for is to build a, like a consensus here. Um, and I think it's legitimate for you to say, hey, we'd have to build another pool house and it's gonna cost us X number of dollars more. Those are real concerns. Um, but if we can come to a consensus with the health department, um, I think I personally would be happier. Um, and can I make a suggestion? Sure. We try what we're doing with the capacity to add one if it doesn't work. Hmm. Now, I don't care whether we turn it over in eight hours or 10 hours if it's clear. Because we still test for coliform and we test for chlorine and we test for everything, metals, everything. We test for everything and if it's not right, we fix it. Right, and I, you know, one, of the, one of the problems here is translating information and transferring information. My understanding was that there was a, a jurisdictional issue that came up and that was that the health department no longer had the, had the um, authority if to, that was to brought do the up, second test. If, they, they, if that was brought up, they brought it up. We never brought that up. That's all news to me. Brought it up to me, so that's- no, By the Board of Health. Yeah. Yes. I said, they, that's news to me, uh, uh, that we do test for all of that and never, would, we're gonna test just the way we always have tested. Would, would you have any objection, I don't mean to cut off questions or dominate this, but I, I, because I've been in sure. communication with the health department, I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. Fine. Uh, would it make sense to have a joint meeting? We'd have to announce it as a public meeting. But I wanna make sure that all of their concerns are, are met. Um, or at least considered, and I, um, I'm concerned that some of the, the technical data, like, you know, Paul, you, you could say things to me, I wouldn't know what the capacity of the pump was, and they have information on uh, uh, E. coli testing, I don't know what the standards are, uh, but I think we need to put all of the expertise at the table at the same time. I, I, we will continue to test the way we always have. We'll be happy to tell them that they'll do that. The one thing we won't do is take their, quote, recommendations if they include things that were under the pool, regs. pool regs that are impractical for our pool. You have to understand that our pool, like it, the Sechi, it is unique. Like the Sechi disc? Say it again? Like the, I think it's called a Sechi disc, S-E-C-C-H-I. No, 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 that has no, to do no, with water clarity. clarity. No, they, they, they want to meet the water clarity standards. Yes, yeah, that has to do with water clarity, and we plan to meet that. But yeah, the, the pond needs to be safe for swimmers. Yeah. All, the, all the chemistry and the clarity has to meet the pool standard. It's right. the things like the dock, the, the, the rope, um, the, well, the number of, yeah. The like the, and the turnover is a major issue. I mean, right now we are turning over every 16 hours. Eight, yeah, 18. 18 hours, and we'd be, under this project, we'd be turning over every 10 hours, uh, and we believe that this will be adequate for uh, Cunningham Pool. Um, I want to make sure that they agree that that's adequate for Cunningham Pool, because the issue is, is, to me, less the turnover rate than it is the, the purity of the water, the cleanliness right. of the that's water. That's right, and the water is pure. It is just, because of the shape of the pool, without any reflections from the side, it's not like a vault pool where you have lights and reflection, and it, it is a, a unique shape, and I am, am told by all of our staff who have been running the pool for a long time that it is as clear as it's ever been, except for that issue that we had with a runoff. And it cleared up, and they say, now it's just the way it always was. Now, because we have a camp regulation, it has to be clear at four feet, and we will make sure it's clear at four feet. And whatever recommendations they make for safety, if we feel they are doable and practical, we are all for safety. But I'm, I'm, and that's why we're putting LED lights at four feet and eight feet so they can see the disc. The people who are jumping off are swimmers. They can't even do it if they're not swimmers. And we have three lifeguards on the, on the I'm just trying to make it so the people can use it. It's as simple as that. The, the reason we, we talk about turnover rate and so often is because it relates directly to the clarity. It's because you're filtering the water twice as fast. 
So if they, if, if you could measure clarity on how far you could see underwater, say, you know, hypothetically you could see 30 feet underwater, if the, fil if the water was being filtered twice as quickly, you could see, say, 60 feet underwater instead of 30 feet. If you double the filtration, you should be doubling the clarity to uh, some, something like that. I don't know exactly how it relates, but it's almost exactly correlated with each other. So that's why we keep talking about improving the turnover rate to improve the clarity. And the biologics, <coughs> the coliform and the E. coli, I think, are separatable from the clarity issue, which can be completely, doesn't have to be, but can be completely a silt and small finds issue. So they, they can be separated. And if they're testing <coughs> for for the biologics and they're coming out fine, that's one test. So maybe they want to share it with the Board of Health so that they have a comfort level with that. Maybe sharing it is not good enough. Because <laughs> if the Board of Health can't get it, then we have to. So they can't mandate it is what the that's problem is. Correct. Right. But we can mandate it, correct? Yes. Yeah, you, you have the authority. They're doing it anyway. You have the authority you to shouldn't, do you shouldn't whatever you it. want. What, and their recommendations, if they are the state recommendations for pools as opposed to the pond, there are some that are impractical for us. Not necessarily costly even, just impractical. For example, we have steps into our pool where the young kids go in and paddle at one foot. You guys have seen it. State regs say you can't have any Ladders going into the pool or steps going into the pool? We have steps. I mean, if, if they're going to try to enforce, the, if you guys want to kind of enforce that thing, we might as well close the pool. We just can't change the pool that much. It's as simple as that. So that was one of the things that didn't make sense to us. The dock can't have a dock. You cannot have a dock. Well, without a dock, we can't filter the water at that speed because the dock needs to be there to, to baffle the output. Yeah, okay. So uh, some of those things are not practical. So if they, if they make those as recommendations because that's what the book says for pools, we'll say that one we can't do, that one we can't do. This one sounds like it's practical and makes sense and we'll say it'll be more safe, we'll do it. But there are some things we can't do. All right, I, I, d I would just like to coordinate. I, I appreciate everything you said, and, and we all have the same goal, to make a sure. safe and wonderful and enjoyable pool or pond for the, the citizens. I mean, that's everybody's goal. Um, I, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, and I, I know there was some frustration that was um, expressed by the Board of Health. Um, so I, uh, any other questions? Because I, 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 what I'd like to do is make sure everybody's on the same page. And if we can take that which is appropriate for safety and cleanliness and implement that as a requirement and then acknowledge that there are some things uh, that are, are unnecessary for safety at the pool, like you mentioned stairs, then, then we, can, we can work around that. Mr. Chairman, I just have one thing. There is a time element here where we need permission to go ahead. We've done our demolition, but there's a, a lot of work that has to be done before the weather changes, and there's not enough time in the spring, so I don't want to, I would prefer not to have a delay for another month to talk to, I mean, I, I would, if you want to give us permission based <coughs> upon something with a contingency or something, but these people need to go ahead. It's, it's a time constraint, it truly is. I don't see any difficulty with that, um, Mr. Chairman. We could always hold a meeting at a later point in time, the pool's closed, and uh, operating season won't begin for some time yet. But one of the things we might like to have so that everybody's on the same page is a common understanding of what the standards are for a pool or what the standards are for a pond, and then how many of those standards have to be met for something to be, I don't know what, what their regs are. Right. Not, not well, like uh, my, my not have people saying it's this and other people saying it's that. If we can get them, I think it would be to our advantage. That's true. My only concern with, with doing a conditional approval right now is that um, I, I think that the eight-hour turnover is a good target. 
I understand you can't make the six hour turnover, and perhaps you shouldn't, it's, it's, it's very large, it's not your basic vault pool, I understand that. Um, but I, in all of my discussions with the health department, it, it, uh, they indicated that the eight hour is a pretty good target. And if that can be done, just from an alternatives analysis, I mean, can you come up with a, I, I don't know what the whole project's gonna cost. And I, right, and I, right now we're up to almost a half a million dollars. And what would be the, the incremental increase? Another 278, is that what it was on that? I, I think I have the number here, I think. To go from- With an alternative. 2,000 to 2,500? No, uh, I think no it, it wouldn't be that much. Hang on. It, it, uh, I think that was for a, a second 2,000 gallon a minute filter doing 4,000 gallons a minute. But. Install two medium size. That would be $249,000 more than what we're already at with 460 something. Yeah, but I think that would be four. Uh, that would be 4,000 gallons a minute, possibly. Yeah. That says six to seven, uh, 3,000 gallons a minute. 67. 6.7 hour turnover. What I would like to suggest is that we go forward with what the project description is now, that we have the capability and the sizing of the uh, pipes that we would have the potential to add if necessary. This would drop our turnover from 18 hours to 10 hours. We could see then practically what the results are as far as clarity and as far as everything else. The other thing is when you have this amount of water and it's turning over, you know, we could theoretically turn it over every hour, but there'd be such turbulence and the turbulence would be greatly increased if you tried to go from 10 to eight. Um, which what, what do you base that on? The pump, the size of the pump. It has but but where, where do you, how do you measure turbulence? Oh, ah, well, that's what we have engineers for. Right, and that, but, but I mean, uh, no, the faster, you, I, I the, faster the flow of the long. water, the more turbulence you'd have in the, in, in the water, because the pump is. The faster or the, the more pipes and filters, those are two different. It's not, well, it's, it's, not, it's just a bigger pipe, it's not more pipes. We'd have to go all the way around the pool to the pool. We'd have to close the pool, that would be more than we could ever. I, I'm not sure what you're referring to. I, I I'm just talking about more pipes. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm suggesting that Bob said it will increase the, the speed or the pressure of the water coming out. And my question was, well, if you add this supplemental system, isn't that going to be in a separate area and not necessarily increase the speed of the discharge? No, no, it's gonna be, all, all the new piping is yeah. under the dock. So right now, the 12, they're doing 1,200 gallons a minute, which is evenly dispersed around the whole perimeter of the pool. So we're, at, so 1,200 is existing and we're adding another 800 gallons a minute, all concentrated in the dock area. So um, if, we, if we go from the existing condition up to 2,000 gallons a minute, we're adding 800 gallons a minute in the dock area. But if we go from the existing condition up to 2,500 gallons a minute, then we're gonna be adding 1,300 gallons a minute consolidated in the dock area. So the water would be a little bit more turbulent in the dock area, but we, we can add more return outlets and disperse it more. Um, <laughs> but you know what that would cost? I mean, we're, the, the pipe that we're proposing to put in under the dock area and under the pool, under the floor of the pool is sized for um, 2,500 gallons a minute. So if we could get approval to put that in um, this fall, and we could work out um, the details with the health department over the winter, then in the spring, we can either proceed as planned to go to the 10 hour turnover, um, so the pool can be open for next summer, or we, if they really, feel strongly about the eight hour turnover, they could, they could look into the other 500 gallons a minute to bring it up to the 2,500 gallons a minute. 
Can I just, yeah. um, I think we are losing sight of the fact that under the regs of a pond, there's no turnover requirement of any kind. There's no turnover at Houghton's Pond. We would like to make it clearer, and that's our issue with doing spending all this money to make it clearer. And if it's clearer at 2,000 gallons a minute so that the board of help us happy with that, that settles that issue. Then as far as testing goes, we're gonna do the very same testing we have always done, sending it to the lab twice a month. We said we'll send it every week if they want. We test for not just coliform, but chlorine level for all the levels that they test. We do it every two weeks. Daily, we take absorption rates and the reading on the um, chlorine, but it's not, it's, it's manually done. This new system will do it automatically and accurately. But the issue here is clarity. That's what their concern is. That's what their authority is. Your authority is everything. But we're gonna do all the testing we've been doing. There's no question about that. And if they told you that, I don't know why they told you that, because that was never our intent. We're gonna test like we always have, with an independent laboratory. I can, Paul, can I go back to something you said? I, and I, I, I was with you, um, and then I may have lost you at one point. If you size it in, in the initial construction, and I understand that there's some pressure on you to get this done, but if you size it for 2,500, um, that would allow for an increase in the capacity by adding another 500 gallons per minute as a supplemental system, that would make me happy. But. Then I thought you said, well, then, you know, we can try it out for a year and see if everybody's happy. Um, I, I, I don't want to give a blank check for a full year until we have some level of confidence that all of the cleanliness standards and the biologics meet what our yeah, appropriate we, standards. We already have. We, we are, in our, in our, the work that we're doing for them for the half million dollars or so, we already have the larger pipe. Or we'll give it to them for free. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. The the ten hour turnover is what they're getting, but the system, the piping we're putting in, can handle an eight hour turnover. But like Mr. Alexander said, the the water clarity is the issue, not not the turnover. The turnover, you know, the regulation used to be twelve, or now it's eight, and it could be six. It's it's just the that standard doesn't it doesn't. It doesn't mean that you snap your fingers and if you change from 10 hours to eight hours, the water magically clears up. Um, it's, it's a standard that has changed over time and it might change in the future. And <clears throat> they're probably gonna have the, the clearest water all summer with a 10 hour turnover. I wouldn't, I wouldn't force them to put in that extra filter system and that extra pump um, at any time, but if, if they did lose water quality, uh, water clarity, I would shut them down and tell them, yeah, you have to add this extra system. It's not safe if it's, if it's cloudy. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't force them to do it right now. They're, it's a pond, other ponds have no turnover, like you said, and they have clear water. Um, but the, the, the piping we're putting in can, can handle more flow. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any uh, bodies, uh, members of the public that would like to ask a question or make a comment? Um, I bet what, what I'm envisioning is, uh, I don't want to slow you down, so I'd like to get it started. <coughs> as long as, as we approve something that has the capacity to increase, and it sounds like a decrease, but increase the, the uh, productivity and effectiveness by going from 10 hours to eight hours. Then I'd like a chance to be able to consult with, uh, in a public meeting, uh, with uh, the health department and make sure that we're all on the, on the same page. I'm being driven by the, the biologics. Um, and uh, that, that's my biggest concern. And that hasn't changed. <coughs> we have tested and we, we get pure, pure tests. The one criticism that uh, we got from the Board of Health chairperson, I mean the agent, health agent, was we had too much chlorine in it. No wonder there's no biological problems. You had a, a five instead of a three. 
you're just killing everything. Well, we're certainly not having any biological problems then, and we have no complaints about red eye, but that's what they worry about because there's, but let's not lose sight of the fact that all they've ever closed is the dock. They've never closed it because of any kind of biological thing, and we send them the tests that we have. We send them every time, every two weeks, and they've never even complained about that. So it's not an issue. We're going to keep testing as we have. The clarity is the issue which we hope we can solve. If we can't, <coughs> we Excuse won't me. use the dock except for the piping. That's the, they've never closed anything else on the pool, just the dock. So let's keep our eye on the ball here. We're talking about whether or not they close the dock. That's all we're talking about. That's all they've ever done. Okay. So I don't, I, I don't want to get into a contest with them about biologics because they have all the tests and I, if I subpoenaed them, you'd have to look at them and they're all pure. We've never had it. Uh, yeah, right, and I, I, I think that they said that, at least I was informed that that's true. That I also heard that the level of chlorine was pretty high and that, yep. that's why the, at least one of the two tests. Yep. My concern is that, and I, I think it's acceptable to you, that we don't have the, the capacity to read these tests every week. So if we made it a condition of this order of conditions, that you test it in the same fashion that you have been, and submit the reports to them. We do anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We do yeah. anyway. Because the authority would come for us, but that's the expertise right. would be theirs. We do it that's anyway, right. and that's absolutely fair and absolutely proper. There's no question. We'll, we will continue to do that. There's never been an issue with that, believe me, and they told you that. Except for the chlorine. Right, they said the chlorine was pretty high. Yeah, well, right. it, it will be it'll be where it should be with this computer that will be far more accurate. Remember, we, what we have is college kids running the filter house. And the is that good or bad? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the proposed system should address the chlorine issue better than it's being addressed now. Right. All right. Anyway, guys, I was really not. I, I'm concerned about the time factor. Understood. I understood. And that's a it's a fair concern, uh, and I think we could probably construct some kind of a a motion to. Um, and there may be other questions that are compelling. Like the storm water runoff, and I think in in a previous meeting last spring we had suggested that that the fertilizers on the ball fields be restricted, and then tonight we hear that maybe that's the cause of the problems with no, the priority. No, no. We, well, runoff. It might. Not, I just mentioned the ball field, but it's this pine needles and acorns and dirt, and nobody knows. But when we had it tested. There was no phosphates and no metals. Okay. So, but it's water coming down there, which at one corner of the pool, the north east corner of the pool, right. it, it is, it's a curb and it goes over the curb and in. So the berm will prevent that. We just don't want, for any reason, just for clarity, for uh, hygienic, for anything. It's a mess. We have to vacuum and so we don't want it to happen anymore. And we'll probably be doing it within 100 feet of the pool, so we'll definitely come to you after we get an engineering study for that. That should affect clarity, too, only after a cloudburst. That's what we're trying to avoid. Cloudbursts. I, I guess we're starting to get repetitive, but please <laughs> consider the time factor. Yeah, I, I think we will. But what I'd like to do is I, I just don't want to give you a, a you know, a, a final solution that the, that the I hate uh, that term. Ten hours. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, the, the ten hours is, is going to be sufficient when, in fact, it, it may, we may be required to uh, appropriately uh, ask you to supplement the system. So as long as the piping is going in hmm. that has the capacity to add the supplemental system, I think that's fair. But I don't want to mislead you in, in a, if the Board of Health comes in and says, oh, it's never going to work. Uh, uh, we have, you have to understand, we have the capacity to go back and say you need another 500 yeah. gallons well, per minute. Well, but I think what they're asking, John, on. is for what they're proposing subject to a performance standard. Right. And if the performance standard isn't met, they're willing to go to the next right. mm -hmm. iteration. And that seems very... Very clear. And the performance standard is, see, I don't know what they are. The I know they test for no. both. Clarity. 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 Exactly. I, I, I know Clarity what those with the discus. 
I, I do know what those standards but are. That's the issue. They're, they're such a disc. Right. But the issue to me is actually on the biologic side. And I want to make, there was concern that the Board of yeah. Health suggested that they were told they didn't have the authority to insist upon the uh, E. coli. They, they could only insist upon. We have but the but authority we give to them give it to them. them. But All right, I, I just want to make sure that we those. We just included in the order of condition that right. they submit the reports yeah. to the Board of Health. And they right. said they're willing to. Right. right. But do you know, for purposes of putting in the motion, what the, the bacterial count standard is? I don't. Is that on the motion? But Just the Board of Health does, right. and we Done. send them every yeah. two weeks. Under, understood. Yeah. So that we need to have a motion that specifically says that we're going to utilize the Board, Board of Health agree. standards for yeah. our hygienic and biologic standards. So is that your motion? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> biologic standards. Right. Not including the turnover. They have no authority for that. You have no authority for that. Turn you alter our water. We have authority to in, in well, put um, in conditions. I'm talking about turnover. I'm talking about turnover. It should be the clarity and the biological. Not the, not the turnover. The, issue. the whole thing. You came to us last spring, and the public may not know this, and you asked us to change this from a pool to a pond. Right. Yes. Because you didn't think you could meet the turnover standards. We knew we, we could. We did it. Right. But we did it with the understanding that there would be no diminution of the hygienic standards for the public safety of there the is city. Absolutely, there, there is not. Is no dim, right. dim That's dim all I want to make sure that absolutely. Very clear. Okay. I'll, I'll well, then, then, then we shouldn't get involved in whether the Board of Health has authority or not. Right. Now, I, I wasn't there. That's what I, I said. We I'm, we have the authority to give it to them. If they see objectionable results, they can tell us. Understood. First of all, if we get a, a result that doesn't look right, we're going to close the pool. Right. But we are very happy to have them look at the biologics every two weeks or every week if they want. It costs us only 75 bucks a week to do a, 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 a test to do it or whatever it is. Maybe it's 200, I don't know, but it's not significant. If they want it every week, we'll do it every week. We will do all the same tests we've always done. That's not going to be diminished because they don't have, quote, authority. We'd love them to see the biologics and put it in the paper. Okay. Can I shift gears and just ask you, uh, like a mundane question? This berm that you're going to put to stop the runoff, uh, how are you going to construct that? It would be, in, well, we've, we've first talked about along the path on the northern thing, putting um, macadam or blacktop, whatever you want to call it, that kind of a berm. We had it looked at by well, the blacktop person. He said, you don't want to do that. People will trip over that. You're better off with an earthen berm and... It, it will run from the same distance from the telephone pole over to the swamp, to the marsh, the swamp, the marsh, and it will divert the water there as opposed to coming in that little corner of the pool. Okay. So that would be maybe not even affect clarity. We just don't want the stuff in the pool. We have to vacuum it and everything. Let's say the clarity is. Listen, can I interrupt you for a minute? saying let's let's say the clarity isn't affected by that that's strictly the filtering system we still don't want the pine needles and the pine cones and the acorns and the dirt in the pool we, we have to clean it up so the, the berm so would be along the south i'm sorry the no, berm would not, be the oh. north side the what the berm would be along the north side not the that south is correct side. The, the, it, of, it, of the pond yes. of the pond but the north side but i was going it into the marsh i was going to say on this on the road it would be on the pool side, pond side of the road, so that the water gets diverted. No, the berm would be behind the road, and the below the hill. Okay, so you, The hill that comes down from the ball fields and the tennis courts. I get it. I, I see how you're going to do it. Yeah. But you're going to have an engineering plan on that. We so will. Right. Oh, we will. We, we wouldn't. Well, so. it's an order of conditions so that we make it contingent upon uh, approval of the engineering right. plan for that. That would be fine. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. It's your motion, right? Yeah. Okay. Don't move. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that we know that it's going to be ultimately over in this way. Yes. So no, I, 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 that's that, what I, that's I, what I was looking for. for. Okay. All right. So uh, the, the motion is is that it'll be sized for 2,500. 
the piping will be right. sized for that, correct? Yep. Um, and there'll be the capacity to to disperse the whatever the discharge or the uh, the outsource portion of the piping, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll have you'll maintain the capacity to go from 2,000 to 2,500, right? Can I? Can we add if necessary? Yeah. It's if, if necessary. necessary. For, if, uh, if necessary is in our perspective, not yours. No. It, this is not form over substance, and it's not authority. I, I just want to make sure that it's it's not your it's not going to be your call as to whether or not you go from two thousand to twenty five hundred. We need it to be well, our call. It, it needs well, to be our call. We can't give you that. We, we cannot cede to you the authority that we get by statute. No, but we are saying that if this system that we are putting in resolves completely the clarity issue, then that's the end of it. We don't want to go we don't spend want to money we don't need to yes. spend and build a building. And it, it's completely understandable. Okay. I just want to make sure that the cleanliness standards, the sanitation component of this, the biologic, right. you know, fits with scientifically reliable methods yep. and that we're in conformance with that for public safety. Yep. And I think we're but probably on the same that's page. That's the biologic. All right. But that's not, it's not your decision. That's all I'm saying. No, you don't we, get a blank check. We expect no. them to monitor the biologic <clears throat> and shut us down, not just the dock. They can shut the whole pool down if it's not proper. We, we agree with all of that. We don't want to have a pool that is making people sick. We just don't want that. What we do, what we do want to do is try to have fun for the kids so they can jump off the dock, but if they can't see... We shut down the dock. They've never shut anything else down. It's just the dock and jumping so they can see at four feet. That's all they've shut it down for. I, I understand that. It, okay. Yeah. All right. So is that your motion? Sure. And, and it's also conditional upon the approval of the, the engineering plan for the berm? Yes. All right. And, and we do, we have, just so that you're on notice, we do have what we call boilerplate. Just so you have what I'm sorry? They're called boilerplate conditions. Yep. They're traditional, we include them in so that during the construction of the berm, sure. you'd have to put in some hay bales, and that's gonna protect you. We understand that anyway. totally. We'd certainly submit yeah, that. Yeah, we accept that. Okay. No, no, no problem, problem at all. All right. All right, so is that your motion? It is. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You made it. I think I know where we are. <laughs> Thank you for your time. All right, thanks. You could have been last on the agenda, please. <laughs> Oh, thank you, you have all. a large agenda. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, uh, notice of intent, 1071 Blue Hill Avenue. That's Curry College. Continued hearing. Start right down? Yes. All right. Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, Jim Burke with the Cell Burke and Associates here representing uh, Curry College tonight for uh, a sewer connection for a new athletic field house. We had a, a site walk at, uh, that we had uh, to take a look at uh, where we we're going to be doing the connection to an existing sewer manhole into an existing MWRA line. What was asked is that we identify any potential trees that would be cleared, and I submitted a plan showing that. Um, it uh, showed, uh, I had 11 trees. I think it probably ended up clearing nine. They range in size from three to eight inches. I think the eight inch one is, a, is dead. Uh, the list is over on the underneath the gen general notes of the plan on the right side. Uh, numbered up in the uh, top of the plan. Um, another alteration of the, of the plan was uh, the elimination of the 
uh, crossroad across the grass from the, the parking lot. Uh, Mr. O'Connell uh, had the opportunity to talk to the fire chief, and he had no problems with the single access, so we just eliminated it. So the uh, construction access is going to be through the existing roadway. Oh, so you don't have to come through the parking lot? No. Nope. No, they, you know. Uh, what, run that bias again? So, the, the, so they this don't, is a significant change from the sidewalk. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. So it's um. Uh, so all the work inside that hundred foot buffer between the twenty five and the hundred foot buffer across the field is gone. So the only um, encroachment into the w jurisdictional area of the Conservation Commission is at the top of the plan, and it's in the 100-foot buffer and the 25-foot no disturb as it approaches the sore manhole. Um, so you're looking at uh, uh, maybe 100 feet of, uh, of sore pipe within uh, the jurisdiction. So again, Jim, how are you going to come in? It's going to come in uh, by the, you know how we came, we accessed yep. the, the field, instead of taking that right turn to where okay. all the parking is, you just kind of go straight along the, uh, along this slope right through here. Okay. So what's going to happen is that they're going to kind of push that, there's a retaining wall there that pinches uh, right in here, and they're going to kind of push that and back. back. Yep. Wait, what about the, the, the traffic will go both ways on that road then? Yes. And where's the turnaround? The turnaround will be in the staging area. So, what do you put down? To, I mean, these are big trucks. Yeah. No, I, I would imagine you're going to be you're going to be uh, removing the sod and bringing in 12 inches of structural fill. Yeah. Right. And that's why the staging area has been increased from the previous plan to correct. Yep. This one. So, our goal is to you know m minimize our Im you know impacts to the into the wetlands. I did take a look at also uh, some of the uh, uh, sewer connections, the other potential sewer uh, connections that we could make. The closest one is up at the top of the hill. Yep. Um, as the crow flies, the, what we're proposing is 500 feet. So, from basically you know here from the corner of the football field to the uh, sewer manhole is uh, 500 feet. Put this together real quick, and the, the the force main would need to be about 400 feet to get up to the top of the hill. So what this represents here is here's the proposed building, the end of the football field. Our closest sword is right here, and it's actually the top of the top of the system for that uh, particular stretch, which makes sense. It's kind of the top of the hill of the campus, and it runs. Uh, Subtly down to Abbotton and connects up to the uh, MWRA line right on Abbotton. Um, there's another line. That I'm, runs I'm sorry, which, which way does it go? Uh, this way. And then up, up there. So it would only be the force main getting up to the to the tie in, and then it's right. a gravity up, up, gravity up feed, and then it's gravity back to Atherton? Then it's gravity back to Atherton, right. Oh. The problem with that is that, you know, the, again, same issues as before. Um, you're looking at, you know, a difference of 60 feet. Um, so that's just the, you know, the, the elevation change. And then you're going to have um, uh, the hydraulic, uh, uh, oh, I forget all the, all the, you know, the friction loss and um, everything else associated with it. So you, you're going to end up with those flows. And jump it up to that. You're looking at some significant pumps. Significant pumps. I also looked up to where the other pump station was. Uh, right here. Is that for the new dorm? It's, it's actually, it, it, I guess it is a new dorm. I, I, they have it as um, 886 Brush Hill, I think. Oh, 86 Brush Hill. Was that John McGrath's old property? Uh, who's John McGrath? That wasn't John McGrath there, was it? I, I don't know what the number is. Uh, yeah, I'm not too, I don't think it was, John, because that wasn't a gravity line. Because that, I remember we were talking to Craig about, you know, because remember how we were going through some wetlands over there? Yes. And, uh, and Craig wanted it to do a um, uh, directional drilling. Do you remember that? Yes. So directional drilling on a gravity line 
next to impossible. I'd say it is impossible because I, I remember talking to Craig about this. He disagrees with me, of course, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, of course? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, to to put a pipe in with, at a specific you know pitch mm. using directional drilling is impossible to do. Directional drilling is typically used for, you know, force main and that kind of thing. Um, th but what's, force what's the cost difference? I understand the difference okay. of having a pump and the, yep. you know, the power yep. source and what happens if the power, mm -hmm. you lose power. I, I understand all yep. that. What's the cost difference between four times. pumping up it four times? The, the pump would be four times more expensive. As for the whole project or just for that? Just for the sewer connection. Just for the sewer connection. Just for the sewer connection alone. Okay. Um, so the, you, you, you know, you're looking at, uh, you know, you can go gravity line, uh, you know, uh, across a field, you know, get within, um, I've, I want to say, 70 feet. If I remember my stationing correctly, um, as I was locating the trees, um, I think the first tree is at about. Yeah, about 67 feet away from the sore manhole, and it's a dead eight inch. Cherry? Is it, is it cherry? Yeah. That's yeah. the only big one. I think it's a dead black cherry. Dead black cherry. It's the only large. There's the only eight inch tree there. Yeah. yeah. Yep, okay. And, um, and you can see that one because that's the, you know it's right in the middle of the path. It's a it's a large tree and there's not a leaf on it. Um, a lot of the other trees that are in there are just strangled by the vines. Um, what, what about I'm, I'm confused by this. It says existing trees within the 25 foot do not disturb buffer to be removed are as follows. And then when you get to num number 10, it says a three inch black cherry will not be removed. I, it's on the list to be removed, but it's not going to be. Removed. Yeah, if I if I labeled that, that it's just too far off the, uh, you know, it's, it'll it'll remain. So number ten is going to remain. If I listed it that way, yeah. All right, because I, what I'm leading up to, it, if if there is a, uh, a performance standard of three to one, and you've got one, two, three dead trees, mm -hmm. and a fourth one not being removed, uh, that leaves seven trees. Okay. Do you have a. a a planting replan? Uh, we do replant not replant. have one as of yet, and uh, you know, talking to Mr. O'Connell again, who apologizes he's not available tonight. Um, but uh, is there a is there a neighborhood meeting tonight on the? There is plan? yes on another project, uh, on, the, on the science project, <laughs> uh, science uh, science building. Okay, where is that going? That is going um, right next to between, it's going to attach to the, the old science building and right next to the, the Levin Library up on the quad. So here's the quad right here. Right. And it's going to be a building that connects to this building here. And it's, it's an existing slope, so it's is that, like is that where the student union is? No, the student union is um, on the, uh, other than the South Campus, which isn't pictured here. This is the North okay. Campus. South Campus down here. It's probably like right about here, I'd say. Okay. Um, so are you going to get us a, a planning plan? Um, we, we can. Like I said, I think, you know, from so that would be uh, 21 trees. Is yes. that, uh, we certainly, you know, we could... Uh, uh, can we condition the pl the planting plan? I mean, we don't have a problem with putting the trees in. The really, that was not Bob's concern. So, okay. Uh, one other question I've got, and I appreciate. Uh, I, I like the idea of not having that that big turnaround. Yeah, so sure. Um, that that does help. But yes, my attention was focused at the end of the parking lot, and right where the outflow is. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a. A big, yeah. You know, uh, Bob and I talked about it at the at the site walk. He said yeah. it was going to get it done and moved. And it's, not, it's still there. Uh, is it? I, I yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll um, I'll make sure it's done. Yeah, we can, we we can, can make that part of the order conditions as well. I mean, and, and put a time on it. He said he was going to get it done, and you know how that goes. It's it's been there for. It was over here. It's been there a while because we. Okay. Um, any other questions? 
commissioners there? Are there about as members of the public that want to ask a question or would like to be heard on this issue? Yes, ma'am, come forward, please. Come, come forward so you can use a microphone. Okay, is that okay? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Hi, thanks. Um, I'm here, my name's Roxanne Musto, and I'm here on behalf of the Neighborhood Association, the Brush Hill Area Neighborhood Association. Um, there was a meeting at Curry for the neighborhood tonight. They did talk about the Science Center, but they also did talk about this project a little bit, and it's very unfortunate because I think some people would have liked to have come here as well. I was contacted by several people, um, several that could not make it. There were um, abutters to the project, more local than I am to the project. Some of the concerns they had were um, with the project itself, uh, and I asked this question tonight at the Curry meeting uh, in terms of the number of bathrooms, um, toilets and things like that, what the usage would be, and nobody could seem to tell me or any of us what the usage would be in the field house. In the field house. So we didn't have any information on that. I think that may have some impact perhaps on the plan. Um, and that was one concern of some of the neighbors that couldn't make it. The other question somebody asked me is, is there a regulation on the size of the um, line? Uh, I know he had mentioned at the previous, the walkthrough, a six inch line. What is the standard? Is it six or eight inch? What is the um, requirement for that type of a uh, building? Uh, Jim, can you answer you the know, question? A, a six inch um, PVC pipe at 1% can you know honestly it used to they, they used to be that used to be a standard main for cities and towns uh, and then uh, they've changed that and they upped that to eight inch and since then mm -hmm. they've upped they used to be four inch for services now it's a uh, six inch for uh, uh, for buildings and the like uh, sizing the flow coming out of that six inch pipe it won't be a problem if you made every single uh, square footage of the proposed building a, uh, a shower stall and a bathroom and, and that's all you did was the shower the kids and, and sent them on their way uh, the six inch pipe would be more than sufficient to handle I, the flow. I, I remember you saying that before but I thought that you had actual calculations. No I haven't, I haven't seen um, there is no um, honestly they're still going back and forth in size of building and the like so um, all I can tell you is that the six inch pipe is more than sufficient. I'd put a four in if I could, only because the four inch would create a larger trough uh, of, of flow and you'd have uh, a better cleaning, self-cleaning service from the line. In a sense, it, the depth of the- You lost me on that. Why would a smaller pipe- no pressure. It, it, it pressure. Because it, there's a little bit more of channelization. Yeah. The exact same reason why you wouldn't have it uh, for, uh, you wouldn't channelize it on the ground. In a sense, it would create, it, it would clean out all the, the it would clean the, the, the sediment and the, and, and the, the, sure. the fines. Yeah, and it, it, the water would pick it right up. And that's honestly what you have in residential sewage. It's basically a, you know, it's a, it's a slurry. And you know you have solids involved in it, and you want to make sure the solids are picked up and moved. So the deeper the flow, the easier it is in self-cleaning. The shallower the pitch and the and the and the larger the pipe, the more difficult it is. And then you have chances of clogging and the like. So, in um, both instances, the six inch should be fine. Um, so, six inches more than capable than handling the flow out of that building. Does that make sense to you? It does. I mean, I just, it's sort of hard to envision when you don't know how, what the actual numbers are in the calculations. And that was the point that this person and had it's dropped. it's only that building, right? Yes, that's the only thing connected to it. Okay. Yes, the town will approve the line, the service. Will it so will the MWRA. approved? I, I'm sorry, was it the and town? It's still a line that town engineer has to look at. And they'll determine whether the six inches is sufficient. But it hasn't yet happened, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. But anything that's hooked up to any sewer line goes through DPW um, town right. engineers. And then does it also have to go through MWRA? It does in this particular case, instance, yes. In most cases, not, but in this instance, yes. Because you're tying into a MWRA. You're tying into an MWRA sewer, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, 
Anything else? Um, That's no, a good, that I was mean, a good point. I mean, that was those were just some of the concerns, and you know, of course, you know, going through conservation and so forth. There were a lot of different issues, but I'm not here to represent all of those issues. I thought some people might be here, but it was tough when we have another meeting at uh, seven, and this is seven thirty, and some people might have just assumed that. You had already met on this, and other people contacted me and couldn't make it. So we had several people that were traveling. But um, I don't know if you've received any correspondence, but there were several people that said that they would send something forward. Uh, and, and so I, I just I I wanted to just let you know that. No, I appreciate that. And I have talked to people in the, okay. in the neighborhood. And uh, you know, I know there, there were concerns uh, like lighting on the football field. But I said, that's really not our issue. Right. Uh, that's not before us. And at least for this project, it's not jurisdictional for us. Right. But come on. Contacts were communicated. Okay, okay. Just want to let thank you, know. you. I just wanted to make sure you knew. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, any, anybody else that would like to ask a question or be heard? Um, all right, any other thoughts or concerns or questions that you have? It seems, uh, you know, I know we're going into the 25 foot, but I, I believe that it's probably a, a, a benefit to tie directly into the NWR. A line right here. Um, but I think it is an appropriate uh, approach to new sewerage. Um, I do have concerns, and I and I would like to put in that you know <laughs> that container be removed from our book and it, put it right it, into I, the water conditions. Bob won't have a problem with that. So I would I would go ahead and uh, say that you, that's perfectly reasonable given the fact that he said he'd move, move it at the site walk. All right. Seven coming as a condition, can we not issue the order? Until it's done. Until it's done. Man, she's, she's tough. She's tough. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that, yeah. <laughs> that would inspire them. It'll be going tomorrow. <laughs> All right. All um, right. And uh, this is conditional upon our approval of a, a replanting plan? A re plan? replanting, yep, yes. replanting plan. And, 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 and that would be all on campus, or they can be around town? Either. Okay. On campus, or if, if they don't have an appropriate location for it, we do have this bank, bank of inventory. Of okay. And, and again, you know, and I think I was fairly conservative with regards to these trees. I'd love the chance, the opportunity to maybe walk it with Hans and, and identify how healthy these trees are because, like I said, a lot of them were. Yeah. Well, you said that, and I deducted those from the 11. Well, I th well, okay. You're saying about the strangle. There might be more. That he was I mean, I, I was going to come in here and say they're all dead, but I figured. <laughs> 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 nice try. <dude. laughs> you know, I, I, you know those crap, those apple trees. Man. <laughs> those aren't healthy. He hasn't lost his sense of humor, has he? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's conditional upon a, an a approval of a, a planning plan, and they can be either on campus or okay. uh, within, a virtual within the, within the jurisdiction of the commission, or d it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. Okay. All right, it doesn't matter to me. It's fine. Okay. All right. All right. Perfect. So any other conditions other than the, the boiler? And we're very concerned with that area. One, one of the things that I, I am concerned with, you're going to be digging a trench right along the bank of the road, the Bradley Road. That really is in tough shape. And I'm not suggesting that that's Curry College's issue. But um, I, I, I take a look at that to see if there's any benefit to planting in that area. I'm not sure yeah, it is. I, I, I honestly think you'd have to clear it first and then plant it. So then you'd be into more trees. I mean, uh, and that that would be a problem because if you're disrupting that, the right. bank is in I, trouble I, anyway. I, I wouldn't want to plant anything. I, there. I just remember a lot of junk trees being, you know, growing along that slope. Yeah. Um, it's a tough area. It's a tough area for the road. Right. Uh, I don't know how the apple trees made it down there, to tell you the truth, but. Uh, Okay. Yeah, the erosion is very significant. Did you see some of the guard yes. posts and how far that? Yes, yeah. I did. That's that. really bad. That's an easy fix, by the way. What the guard posts? The, the erosion from the road. It's called a curb. But <laughs> <laughs> a new idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any other uh, conditions other than our regular boilerplate? Okay. So we've got on, uh, uh, on the equipment. That, that's the boil plate. The yeah, yeah, the equipment, equipment yeah. can't be stored there, but right, you, right. you know that. And that this is, you can trench that in a, a Oh, day. Uh, yeah, easily. Uh, it's a 
Yeah, you can get in and out of there. And I, I, that's gonna be my suggestion, to tell you the truth, is, is make the connection uh, uh, first and, and, then, and then come out at 1% on the pitch and, and backfill. Uh, so get out of there. Is, that's where we're starting. That's where I'd wanna start to get, the, get, the, get in and out of there as fast as possible. All right, and do you have a, a construction plan right now? Because I know that that area does flood. Yes, uh, and, and uh, we do not, uh, and I think we can certainly agree to doing this work in the dry months. Sure. Do, we, do we need a provision for restoration within the wetland? Well, we're not in, the not in the wetlands, but, but <coughs> within, within the, the, the 25 foot, right. yeah. No, that, but honestly, I was thinking that'd be part of my planting plan. Yeah, to but to replant with, you know, whatever wildflower mix of right. something appropriate for the, the buffer? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was inappropriately did, trying did to say. <laughs> oh, I was, you want a construction plan? No. No, it's uh, a replanting plan for the area that's disturbed to trench the, the sewer pipe. Okay. Because they're in our 25 foot zone right there. Right. Okay, so we included the um, Correct. Yeah. Right. We'll come up with something nice. Yeah, so it's, it's a restoration type of thing because you can hardly tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's so low. And, and you've got 21 trees in the replant plan, Kathy? Yes. Okay, all right, fair enough. Anything else? That's it, do the motion? Yes, Arthur? So moved. Second? All in favor? Aye. Aye, okay, good, thanks, Jim. Thank you very much. You're not going far, though, are you? Nope. Next on the agenda is Notice of Intent 374, Brook Road. Good evening again, Jim Burke with the Sell Burke and Associates here tonight, uh, representing uh, Northland uh, Residential. Uh, Jack Dolly of Northland Residential is with me tonight. We had a site walk back uh, a couple weeks ago, and we had the opportunity to visit the site and uh, um, basically found that uh, the house is, uh, uh, the property is in need of uh, uh, some improvement. Um, you also didn't like uh, the, the original proposal, they th thought it was a little aggressive with regards to setbacks to the riverfront, uh, amount of impervious area, uh, etc. So in our response, uh, we've reduced the size of the house. We've, uh, the box we've proposed is a 38 by 36 box. It really hasn't been designed from an architectural standpoint. It's really kind of just where can we actually fit uh, a home on this particular lot that doesn't significantly impact the riverfront. Uh, we used the uh, building setbacks as well as the 25 foot no disturb buffer for that design of the box. In addition to that, we added a 12 by 24 uh, garage uh, in the same location as the existing garage and also reduced the size of the driveway by half by making it uh, a single lane as opposed to a double lane driveway which was originally proposed. Uh, the result was a, a, a reduction in uh, uh, impervious area from the original proposal to our current proposal. It's, this project still has an increase in impervious area from uh, current conditions. However, I, I believe the mitigation uh, proposed for stormwater control uh, provides the uh, BMPs to meet the performance standards set forth in uh, the riverfront and uh, redevelopment area. So, uh, from my perspective, you know, since we're capturing the roof runoff um, and recharging into the ground, it actually has a lot of benefit for uh, <coughs> flood control. Uh, for uh, groundwater protection, for uh, uh, sedimentation and erosion control. A lot of the interests that are, uh, are set forth in the, um, the regulations. So whether the house is 36 by 38 or 24 by 36, uh, the stormwater controls can meet that performance standard uh, in, a, in an efficient manner. Um, We also, you know, pulled back um, the, uh, just a little bit, and if I can hand this up to you guys, th th this is just an overlay. The outline in red is where 
way the existing house and driveway is, and you can see how we're, uh, you know, pull, pulling it back, but just a little bit here, uh, back from the, uh, the riverfront line. And uh, it also shows you the increase in the previous area. It's basically the back in the air, back of the lot, and it's all roof runoff. We're reducing the, the, uh, the driveway size, so, uh, but our increase is all coming from pretty much roof, which again is controlled by the stormwater. Uh, by the underground recharge. You remove system. the front walkway and replace it with the paper walkway too. Correct. I, I'm lost on, on what you just gave us. The red outline is existing. Right. Is existing. As it stands today. So you're actually bringing the driveway further away from the road. Yeah. Correct. And the house? Is that the same line? The house is almost in the same location. We're still, the, the, the existing house is 11.5 feet from the bank, and we're proposing at 13. And that, the, the, what that bank means is, is basically the base of that retaining wall. So we're pulling it back a, a, a foot and a half um, from the bank. Essentially, it's in the same location. And I, I was talking to Hans about it in the, in, in, you know, and I don't know if you guys remember the conversation, but he, he seemed he was okay with, you know, keeping that, that impervious area in that particular location, as long as we didn't go any closer. Uh, so the garage, as currently existing, is 24 feet, and as proposed, it's <coughs> What, 24 feet? Same. Yes. I was hoping the overlay would make it easier for us. It seems like it made it harder for you guys. Um, and what about the, uh, I, I know that uh, one of the issues that came up was the condition of that retaining wall. Yeah, I, in, in the thing that came about on that particular conversation is kind of it's, it's shown in the design. Um, if you remember, we had the house with a full foundation um, pretty much right where the existing house is, and there was a concern raised with regards to the excavation going down the eight feet for a full. Correct. And, and so what we said is that, okay, fine, we'll just, you know, knock down the existing structure and use that same excavation area, build a new foundation and uh, for, uh, for uh, a garage, which doesn't have a foundation underneath it. So it's basically the same excavation when we collapse that, whole, collapse that building and uh, remove the existing foundation. We'll have an excavation already uh, that we can use to rebuild the, the garage area. And that was the the reason why we chose that. Is the wall adjacent to the brook that it's running parallel to the, well, I know it's not parallel to the brook. Yeah. On the right hand side as you look at, at yeah. the diagram. Um, that's going from 11.5 to 13 feet. So Correct. are you building the new foundation inside that or are you just creating a slab for the garage? It, well, you'll have a frost wall that will uh, uh, go down four the four feet, so you have a, you'll have a footing. Uh, frost wall will come up, and uh, and you'll come across with the top of foundation, you know, six inches to a foot above grade, uh, and and build your foundation, put your sill on that, and you'll come across uh, uh, at uh, at the existing grade of what it's at, and and build a six inch slab or a four inch slab, depending on what you need for uh, for the garage. Jim. Can, can you talk a little bit about the existing wall being protected? I know that what you just said is part of that. Yeah. Um, we, we're not planning on touching that wall. I mean, you know, and, and it is. It's not in, in great condition. Um, uh, I wanted to ask, whose jurisdiction is that wall to? Ours. That's a town. Uh, well, I, I know conservation-wise, right? But construction-wise, construction maintenance. Well, I don't, I don't know because if the homeowner, the prospective homeowner, it moves in and all of a sudden the wall collapses, and the yard spills into the brook, we're going to go to them and issue an enforcement order to get this. But again, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you whose wall that is. I could, I can surmise that it belongs 
for the town. It's within the drainage easement um, that is that was built with um, federal money, and. Uh, it looks like it was built before there was a federal government. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Uh, you know, so I mean, uh, I couldn't tell you, you know, like what the ownership responsibilities are for that particular wall, but my guess would be that it would, and again, and the town would probably fight you on it because they don't want it either. Uh, it would be a mess. Yeah. So what, what it says here on the plan that you just handed out, existing wall to be protected. Right. Well, it, it's on your stamp plan, too. Right. W what does that mean? Uh, it means basically stay away from it and, you know, be, uh, we, we can certainly regulate it even a little bit further and, and make sure that there aren't any, he you know, heavy equipment going around that way. We could put some construction fencing that, that comes 10 feet off to the foundation and, and they work it, front in, you know, as you're looking at the, the lot uh, right to left. Left. So you'd come in and we could block off that area. And actually, that's probably a, a, a good idea. You'd maybe pull in the, the erosion control it and, and uh, put it a foot off the, uh, the foundation wall. And that will make them, that'll cut them off from, you know, proceeding uh, in that direction. And there's no question we could, you know, build what we needed to build by eliminating that area. Wouldn't be a problem. You just, you know. The uh, I, I demo know. part's the easy part, and also, as far as doing the form work, uh, one side would you, you'd work one side of it. It'd be, uh, you know, and, but with the excavation hole already done, with the uh, the existing foundation, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But how do you build the back of the foundation? Because you're moving the back. So wall. you'd build the back. You'd build the back. Well, you'd put the footing in, and then you, you'd you'd uh, strap your your. Uh, uh, you put your front, front, uh, your back wall, your outside wall in, and then just stabilize it from the, the from the other side, and come up with the other one, and uh, and tie it in together, and then just pour it. So you got you got. I, I heard what you just said. No, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> but you know, the, you, you, you just end up bracing it inside the foundation. So you, you know, uh, as opposed to. Well, how do you get a concrete truck? If you drive a concrete truck. I don't know what the weight is, but I can imagine that there's pretty significant lateral pressure. Yeah, but you want you want horrible. Yeah, but they have a chute that's 20, 30 feet long. You could actually get a pump you truck. truck if you you're going to have to get a, a, a pump truck to get all the way to that back wall of the foundation. Easy, no problem. You would have to pump that back wall. You'd pump the whole foundation. You think so? Well, you I'd put the truck right here. Right, where are you, where are you pointing to, Jim? Because right on the driveway. That's where we probably wouldn't want the truck. I don't know yeah. if we could push it that far. Yeah, that's I mean, a if, lot if of has, weight. If, if you had, yeah, but to me, I don't think a, you know a, a concrete truck that's going to be there for less than an hour is going to have a significant impact to, or, or to that particular wall. Uh, if you you know because you're still you're still. 13, 15 feet away from it. Uh, but if you have to pump it, you have to pump it. I mean, you know. Do you know, I mean, you're going to have to get a building permit from from the town. Mm -hmm. Are they going to go out and look at this? I, I don't know what that process is. Is somebody going to look at that wall and say, ooh, whoops, no. we've got an issue here? No, I mean. Or should should they? Maybe that's the better I, question. I think, you know, well, let's put it this way. I think, you know, from a state, I've done some work with, um, who are the damn people? I didn't mean that. You know, the damn people? Yeah. <laughs> I know what you meant. Yeah. Uh, I forget the uh, Yeah. Uh, maybe it falls under their just jurisdiction. Maybe it's it could be, you know, FEMA, and they have tons of money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's not anymore. <laughs> I, I think Kathy, what, do, what do you think? Is that something that yeah. DPW should look at? I'm, I'm very concerned with the condition yeah. of that wall. It's I feel comfortable with that. Yeah. yeah the engineering. I, I mean, the, th the tie the, the redevelopment, to tie the reconstruction of that wall to the redevelopment of this particular lot, it, it kind of kills it uh, from the standpoint of, of 
what this lot is I, yeah, trying I to do. I understand that, and, and I think you made that, that yeah. comment at the, when we were on the site walk, but we don't, we can't avert our eyes and no, pretend I understand that. that it's a... No, I understand that. I think, I think maybe establishing ownership might help, but I mean, you know, other than that, I mean, putting putting the cost of repair on it. I mean, the the wall's going to fall down eventually. But you know, <laughs> so is you know. And I, you want our stamp of approval? No, it, well, again, <laughs> it, it's not part of the project. It's not a matter of stamp of approval or anything like that. It's just that the, the fact is that the wall was constructed poorly uh, by whoever and uh, you know uh, there there are there are structures out there that are older than that that are not even close to falling down right now so that that perform the same task probably in the same watershed and uh, so from, from my perspective I have, if, if you guys want to investigate it who owns it and, and, and how to do we repair this I don't necessarily have a problem with that I just don't want it to fall upon my client or in this order of conditions well, we don't want to issue an order of conditions if we know or should know that approving the order of conditions is going to weaken the wall further. I just like some level of confidence that what we approve is not going to create another problem. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm not concerned with... No, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I think, I, I mean, I guess from, from my standpoint, is that, I mean, we can come in and, I mean, we can put the limit of work... Um, right up the corner of that garage, right perpendicular, and, and, and shoot it straight uh, 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 to the back of the, um, uh, to the back fence. So, I mean, it runs, to basically runs parallel to the, to the wall and, um, and stay out of that area. I can slide over the, 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 the storm water without too much trouble. I mean, if that's, slide if over that's the sufficient to... What are you sliding? The, the storm water. The storm... Uh, the uh, the three Caltex in the backyard. Oh oh, I'm sorry. I, I was in the front yard. So those yeah. So those uh, those guys are, you know, probably uh, excavated down to about five feet, and bring in some stone, and then you bring those in. So you can push those over to the to the left of the lot. That's great, but I I don't think that's where the problem is. I think the problem is that on the street side of the lot, on the right hand side. Because that's where the wall is the, in the worst shape. Agreed, and and, and uh, you know, like, like I say, if if if, it, if if the protection that you need is for us to shut that area off between the existing garage and the existing wall, we can do that and build what we need to build. And that would, if that provides you the security that you need, we can do that. Other than, other than that, I'm not too sure what else we can do. But you know, because we we don't necessarily have to go near it. I, I don't know. I, I would feel more comfortable, and I, I don't. I don't have a problem with a the project, mm -hmm. and, and b because it's going to improve the site, right. um, and b I don't. I don't have any problem with you know the concerns voiced by the developer that they don't want to fix that wall, right. but I also don't want to issue an order of conditions when we've got an engineering problem just over the horizon. And I, I would, I'd be more comfortable if the town engineer took a look at that and said, is any construction on this site going to endanger that wall? Oh, okay. I mean... Um, so do you do a letter from the town engineer? I, I would. That's, that's my view. I, I don't know. I concur. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Protect you, too. Yeah, I agree. Do you have any thoughts on that? Or? Uh, yeah, when we start rebuilding the wall, I'm about abandoning the project. I mean, <laughs> it, it, well, to, uh, yeah, uh, I think. I, I don't. I, I don't think that's being unreasonable. I, I understand what your position is, yeah. but I hope you understand what our position is. That we don't want to say, "Oh, sure, that's a great idea," and then, you know, have the wall fall down. We don't know whose wall it is. No, I don't nobody's going to nobody's gonna ask you to rebuild no, something that's not yours. Just put it around. We knock it down. But, you know. Well, I don't think that... Uh, that will help either. I mean, I... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The genie's out of the bottle. He's saying take the garage out of, of this plant. Just make it a tandem driveway. And... Knock the garage down, fill it. But what about what the other house on the other side of the brook did? Is they put the garage inside the, the footprint of the house? Because they had as originally planned it, 
they had a garage outside the house, but it was pinching the brook, to, it was pinching a 25 foot non disturbance zone. Mm. So they took it out and actually put the garage inside the house, inside the footprint of the house. I, I know it makes it, it's a living space issue. Right. But that's what they did on the other side. The house right. that adjoins the, the brook. Yeah. And you have to have a 30 foot setback from the rear property line, right? Correct. So there's no elasticity there. Well, I mean, yeah, if you know, I, I don't know the answer to this question, but I'll ar articulate it is, I can probably pull a remodeling permit to remodel the house as it exists in place without an order of conditions. I don't know how you do that. I mean, you're in a, <laughs> you're in a jurisdiction. If I want to replace the windows on that house, I have to come get an order of conditions from you guys? If you knock it down, I, I don't no, know. No, and I'm not saying I'm knocking it down. I'm saying I'm repainting it. <laughs> no, I mean, it It'd be a waste of paint. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the point is, is yeah. can it not be renovated in place as it exists now with no expansion of its footprint whatsoever? Um, I don't think so, because I think no, that the, the word is alteration for us. Yeah. It's not footprint. It's, it's footprint not alteration. It's a remodel of the house. The I don't wanna, if I want to reside that house, I need an order of conditions? If, there's an, if you bring in, a, in equipment to do it, sure. Uh, I mean, the equipment you mean, is going to mean, a, mean a, a, a nail pouch and a hammer? No, I don't mean that. Ooh, okay. If, if the, our word, our trigger is alteration. So if you're gonna bring in a cement truck to remodel it, then yeah, you're probably gonna alter the, the riverfront. Yeah, I don't think I, I think I can bring in a cement truck. Okay, well, we, I don't think we have to, uh, that's not the issue. We're gonna, uh, well, we, we're, you know, we, we can parse that, but, but, but we're going down a slippery slope that, I mean, as the other gentleman of the board said, we'll go get a structural engineer to come out and look at it and tell me the wall's fine. No, nobody's going to do nobody's that. Nobody's going to do that any more than the town engineer is going to do that. No, but what I'm looking we're, we're for. We're going to box ourselves back into a corner that says, okay, who owns the wall and who's going to replace it? The, the, that, he's got a good point. I mean, the, the town so engineer. Where are we going with this? The town engineer. You say, okay, we'll take the garage out of off this side of the building, the 12 by 24 foot garage that exists at present because we don't want to alter any ground because we may. We may undermine or structurally imperil the wall. We may. Well, the outcomes could be too that it's deemed that you don't own the wall and that the wall is sufficient. Well, uh, no. Uh, okay. No, yeah. Could be. Right, right, We're not right, trying to throw right, right. roadblocks. We're just trying to protect <laughs> yeah, yeah. the right. wall. Hey, snow tomorrow, too. But <laughs> he, he, <laughs> it's happened before. <laughs> he's, he's got a good point. I mean, the town engineer, have you know? Say he says he agrees with us, and then you know, uh, and uh, says the construction doesn't have uh, will have an impact on the integrity of the wall, and it won't because the integrity of the wall is not good. But you know, and then through no whatever instance, you know, uh, uh, a cloud burst would come in and, and all of a sudden the wall falls down and now the town is kind of I, I just don't see the town engineer making that kind of judgment or risk i don't think he can but you're asking us to do it you're asking it, us to put our stamp of it's approval a, it's an existing condition that we're not changing we sure you're it, changing it. You're, you're, we're not, bringing in, we're not, we're not touching you're bringing it. in heavy equipment. You're, yeah, you're, you're knocking down a. The, an there's heavy building. equipment going, going that crosses that culvert every day that shakes that wall more th than we could ever do. Every day. Oh, you mean talking about Brook Road? I'm uh, not talking about Brook Road. I'm I, talking but again, it, the thing is, you know, it, it's a situation that uh, that we're not impacting. We're not applying to impact it, and we're not going to impact it. We're coming up with a plan to mitigate uh, and protect that wall. Now, there's going to be an instance uh, where, uh, heaven forbid, someone you know has an accident and smashes into the, the bridge abutment there. That wall potentially could come over. It might not. 
But I mean, the situations, you, you can't control everything. So all I'm saying is that we're maintaining a, a, a construction footprint on our lot to redevelop the house, and that's it. And we're gonna protect that wall. And you know we'll do it to the best of our ability. If it falls down, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. No pun intended. So, you know, it, you know, it, it, if I would say that whoever knocks that wall down, that lucky person owns uh, it. Huh? Owns it. Owns it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's common sense. I'm still looking for a town engineer to take a look at it and tell us that we're not crazy to approve a project that could end up in a disaster. I, I don't think that's an unreasonable position to take. And I'm not just throwing uh, up roadblocks. Well, uh, I, and I don't necessarily have a problem asking the town engineer that. I just, what if he, does, he doesn't want to make an opinion? Well, I'll, I'm, I'm not looking for a guarantee. My concern is if we put heavy equipment on there, and I know you said, oh, we'll keep the cement truck away and we'll have it you know, parked on the street and pump it, but you're going to have heavy equipment there and there's going to be some vibration when you're, when you're knocking the house down or digging out the, you're moving the foundation, you're excavating there. I don't know what the lateral load is. And I'd like the town engineer to say, John, the lateral load is going to disturb that. I know he's not going to guarantee it. He's not no. going to say it's a great wall. We, are, we already know that. Existing wall. Here we are. Here's the brook. Go in there. Put in during construction. 20. No, oh, short. Short. 25. No. 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 <laughs> I'm going home. No. No. Good night. Good night. May I continue the hearing to uh, <laughs> November? November, that'd be great. Sure. Thanks. Would right. you ask the town engineer to, uh, to take a look at the, the wall? Um, I couldn't uh, ask you guys to. I'm going to ask for an extension on 333 Hillside Street because we're still working on it. Unless you guys want to look at the plan. No, I, we're looking for a sign off from Steve Ivins. I, I mean. talked to Steve. He still do, you still know, do work on the, the trench. Um, and, uh, we're still in the process of construction. So Steve's not signing off on anything yet. Uh, but he, he I, did, I can he tell that from the emails. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, he, he had a problem with the, uh, with the trench. And, uh, but again, I don't want to take up these people's time. I just would love to get out of here. Um, it's okay. It's. I'm sorry, you jumped to um, number, nine. number nine. Number nine. Do you want to continue that? Yes, please. Any any thoughts? It's, it's okay with me. Arthur and Ingrid? It's fine. It's fine. Okay, good. Thank you. That's continued till November? Mm -hmm. Oh, can I continue Randolph F. Megblaine, too? <laughs> Which one? Randolph Make F., the, uh, the 40B over there, and Randolph F. You have to send the weather. I did, too. I did? I didn't? I believe you. I believe you before me. To be on October? You might be no. on November. Uh, well, uh, if I could request an extension for the Meg Lane till November meeting, that'd be great as well. <laughs> Since I don't see it on the agenda, that doesn't I know. Me. I did, I'm not sure it was. I just. I just it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I was beginning to wonder. <laughs> <laughs> what am I missing? <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Thank you, Jim. All right. Next one is uh, number five, Enforcement Order 531 Elliott Street. And uh, Kathy, we. The and the email says um, Hi, Kathleen. I won't be able to attend tonight. <coughs> I've been called into work. <coughs> I can email the estimates and scope of work. We had to address a few things, however. We've missed the season with scheduling, and we're now planning on landscaping in the springtime instead. And just to refresh your memory, 531 Elliott Street is where uh, the homeowner went in with a, you know, some kind of a bobcat and started changing the elevation um, and trying to extend the yard out to a very steep hill, actually. No, they brought in Phil. Yeah, they brought it, correct. Yeah. They brought in Phil, but they used a, uh, like a bobcat to, to push it back because it's a very steep drop to the, towards the train tracks and the Deposit River. Um, and it's only going to make it steeper 
by extending the, the backyard out towards the river. So what we had originally asked for was that he put a tarp over it. But then when did we start this? This goes back some time, doesn't it? No, it was at our last meeting that we... Oh, no, that, it's been what several, it's, it's been several meetings that we've gone through. It was one through. prior to that. It's been on the list a, a, a yeah, few times. not that long, so maybe two meetings ago? I think that so. Two months ago? Yeah. Two, 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 two. August. All right, I just want to make sure if he's going to overwinter down. that he keeps the top on the fill that was brought in and to the extent that he can stabilize uh, that slope. Because he, as I understand it, and I'm trying to refer back to or refresh my memory with the pictures that we had, um, it, it, he did push, or the contractor did push some of the fill back towards the river, and it's, it's all loose. I, I don't know how they're going to try to retain that if he's considering a retaining wall or if he's going to try to plant the surface, but we need to have some kind of a mechanism for preventing erosion right, during it's the winter. It's going to wait year for that now. So maybe koi logs, um, both at the, at the crest of the hill and at the base of the hill? That, I, it, it's, I do. it's pretty steep. So top over the piled fill and then koi logs at the at the uh, break in the hill and then at the bottom of the hill. Because the bottom, if, if we don't put them at the bottom of the hill, it's gonna keep it's going. Right into the river. Yeah. All right, does, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So could you write a, a letter to him and say, we'll continue it, but is he asking to continue it to the next meeting or, I know he can't do the landscaping no, until it's spring. We'll go nearly the scope and then continue to spring. All right, well, we'd like to, I'd like to see the scope of work uh, right. at, at our November meeting. Agreed. Okay? All right, good. So we'll continue that, number five, to the November meeting. And next on the agenda, number six, order of conditions, modification 151 Woodlands Road. Uh, my name is Paul Sullivan. I'm here as the applicant for 151 at Woodland Road. Uh, an order of conditions was issued on this uh, back in the spring, I think. It's been a little while. And uh, just first, I'd like to give you an update of where the, the conditions are out in the site. We uh, installed erosion control last spring and uh, we removed some trees from the site, and uh, there is uh, some wires in a telephone pole that kind of runs through the middle of the property, and we're in the process of uh, discussions with Verizon to uh, to move the wires in the pole, and uh, so we've, we've been waiting on that. Um, in the meantime, we've uh, marketed the lot, and uh, we have a party that was interested in potentially building a house that I had built up in lower states of, uh, back a few years. And so it has a different footprint than the, the existing, uh, the approved uh, uh, plan. And uh, it's similar in size, it's a three car garage, but it has a, a little different shape to it. This was the existing approved plan. Uh, the driveway was here out front, the three car garage. Uh, the uh, shared driveway is uh, in this location between 167 and 151. And what we're proposing is um, this footprint is uh, basically in the same location, uh, with, but the driveway is further from the wetlands. Uh, with the other house, the, the driveway was in this area here. This driveway is uh, more, uh, goes along the easement and then 
the, gr the house is turned and the garage is in the back in the rear of the house, so that it's, uh, it's further away. The other thing we've uh, proposing is um, after discussions with the potential buyer they, uh, and with the owner, so that uh, <coughs> Delaney's at uh, 161, uh, we thought about uh, splitting the, the driveway and putting a, a green space in between the driveway so there's two separate, they're all within the uh, easement that was in the original plan. Um, and I just wanted to get some feedback from the commission on it. Uh, and hear what your thoughts are. We, when this um, was last on the agenda, uh, we did some background checking and found that in our order of conditions, one of the conditions was that the easement be recorded. And uh, my understanding is the easement has not been recorded. Yeah, I recently gave it, we thought when we come up with the idea of putting the two driveways, we might have to modify the easement, so we held off recording it rather than have to record another plan. But I gave the plan to my attorney, and he's uh, he's recording the the easement if he hasn't already. All right. Well, I, I I tell you, I'm not willing to record. I mean, that was a specific issue that came up. It was a specific condition, and that was issued. I don't know, nine months ago. <coughs> And I'd be, I'd be delighted to take a look at this and, and uh, issue a modification, but it, it hasn't been complied with. Um, it, it, my personal view is that was a very specific condition of the original order of conditions, and until that's been complied with, I, I, would, not, uh, I, I would not move to modify. I, I believe it was re it's been recorded. I'd have to check with my attorney. I gave him to him the other day. And um, I can confirm it with Kathy tomorrow if he's had it recorded and show proof of it. Well, I, I don't know what the, your, your time pressure is, but yeah. Anyway, I'll say that. Excuse me. So I guess what I'm trying to get a sense from the commission is whether something like this would be a minor modification or require open, opening the public hearing. It would affect my buyer, you know, if it's gonna turn into, they're looking to be in by next summer or so, if it's, uh, so I just have to give them a sense of how long the per time period it would take. Yeah, well, I, I um, you know, this was kind of a significant issue to me, and I, and I see this most recent engineering plan saying wetland lines delineated by others and shown on this plan solely in capital letters at the request of the Milton Con Con. That was an approved line, and that's a wetland line that we approved, and that was the reason for the easement. And it's almost like, you know. Yeah, we're not contesting the deadline. I'm not sure why it's on this plan. I just saw this plan. Uh, just yesterday or today. But we're not contesting that line. All right, well, I, I don't think that there's an issue. I, I don't know that if the uh, planning department has any issue with an 11-foot driveway. I don't think they do, but I don't know. It's, um, it's pretty standard it's with it? my driveway is 11 feet. I mean, if it's a longer driveway, they tend to be narrower, you know. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think that's an issue, but it's a real issue for me not to have that e easement recorded. No, I understand that. It'll, it, it, it'll be squared away if it isn't already this week. And we'll provide proof to Kathy. Um, are there any questions as to whether, I think the issue is whether or not this is a, a major modification or a minor. If it's a major one, uh, that it, it would require 
that a new order of conditions be filed and a hearing be held on that. If it's a minor modification, th then we can vote to modify the original order of conditions. Um, and obviously if it's a new one, then abutters would have to be notified. If it's a minor modification, then it would not, as long as it's on our agenda, which it is, and it's public notification. So um, I... Yeah, I mean, the location of the house is very similar. The grading is, has not really changed. Um, I, I think the... What's the size of the house? Um, it's, it's probably about 30... I think I built the house up in low estate, so I think it was 3,700 square feet with three car garage, which was pretty much the house that we had proposed, which also had a three car garage. I think the driveway is significantly further away from the wetlands, which seems to be a plus. The order of conditions, but but not the easement. Correct. That one's void. This one's void. This one's void. Do we know which one? I've, I've got three uh, I'll void the, plans. The date is on this plan that I have. Uh, it looks like it was uh, 9 7 16. Okay, this is what was recorded in the date. Yeah. September 7th, I think, was the. the street, and this is when we found out the easement was not. I believe this one was the pool plan, is it? September 9th. We should have been one of the first ones. We got a lot of void plans here. I think it's yeah, September was the last uh, September 6th or something. Of, of what year? Of 16, 2016. Do you have it? If I have July, it should be. That's the plan I have, anyways. Someone that just came in here. It says August 1st, yeah, right. and then... Maybe August 1st. Yeah. Oh, this is an off-site, though. Oh, so this was... What's your date? No, this is the 10th. 10th of... September. And this is the 7th Seven. of September? I think this is on the site walk and then they give us an upgrade plan. Yeah, if that's the 16th, that should be the oldest, I would think. Most current. So what's the difference? Because this one says void and that one doesn't. I think they're both the same. The there was just some small changes at the end, I, I think. I believe. The end we moved the tree, we moved the line. Yeah, that's
two weeks, please. The easement. Oh, that's a okay. okay. And this one. If you want to make sure the easement was worth it. Okay. No, this one is not stable. And the date is October 28, 15. Updated 9, 10, 16. Right. So what, what's your date, 9, 10, yes. 16? Okay. okay, that's the yeah. approved plan, okay. All right. So And so the difference now in terms of what you're moving. So this house is more of an L shape, the garage is to the rear, which is further away from the wetlands. I mean, the central location is, is essentially the same place. Uh, the grading in the front yard is essentially the same. relationship to the 25 foot buffer is similar uh, further away actually uh, 25 foot no disturb Where the the landscape I'm trying to find the 25 foot non disturb uh, on the front piece of wetlands or No, to the uh, uh, wetlands on the right-hand side, that one done by uh, Brad Holmes. Yes. Yeah, it shows a uh, silt barrier. It wraps around it, so it don't say location. I, I see the silt barrier, but I'm right. trying to find the 25-foot non-deserved. Uh, it's the same line, I believe. It's just following Should that line. Yes, okay. yes. So that barrier is already in place. When you say that barrier, are you talking about the silt fence? Silt fence, yes. Yeah. I'm still so the stuck in the house. It does, the house looks significantly bigger. Am I missing something? Uh, I think it's because of the garage is off the rear. But uh, the square footage is, is, is fairly similar. What is it? Uh, the first building was 3,600, and this one's maybe 38. E exclusive of the garage? Yes. So is there anything above the garage? Uh, there's a small room. Unf some of it's unfinished. It's just... Uh, so is that not included in the calculation of the square footage? No, it's included, uh, the finished portion of it. It's not all finished. There's a portion of it that's finished. It was finished when I built it up in low estate, so... What's the, the what's the footprint difference? Um, I think the house is just a little bit, it's a little bit deeper. The length of the house is similar, uh, but the garage was in line with the front of the house on the original plan. And uh, but the, this house is a little deeper. I think the original house was 31. 30 or 31 feet deep, and this might be 34. Am I, are we looking at the same things? I, 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 am, I am lost on this. Yeah, I left mine at home, unfortunately. Yeah. This, this is colored up, it makes it a little easier. Yeah. That's the original house. Right. That's the original Trade off is over here going up. Look, 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 look at these lines down here. Look at the. There's, there's a. 192. 192. 
lines aren't the same at all, are they? No. That's not a minor alteration. Which one? The how, I, unless I'm looking at the wrong house, I'm looking at, at uh, the original one that was approved, and the date is October 28, 2015, but it was updated on 9-10-2016. Mm -hmm. And now I'm looking at the one that we're l looking at here with the, the house change. I mean, there's a, there's a big, chunk of addition. That footprint doesn't even look close. Well, it's the length of the actual house. The, f the first part has the garages. The original plan that was approved has a three-car garage there. So that three-car garage, uh, but in, there's the a three-car garage in the original plan. Yeah, yeah, then there's house. Where? Where? It's right in the front. It's right where the driveway is. This is right here. You can see the driveway. I called it up. Hard to see some of the features unless it's colored. So that's the original plan right there. So this living space behind the garage, you can see the jogs behind the garage. Over here? Yes. Exactly. The garage is under the house? It's in front of that. The garage is in front of that. But it's not drawn in? No, it's right where the driveway is. There's a three car garage there. Is, is the garage where, the, where it's blue? Yes, but the whole build, yeah, the, the whole house is blue, but the garage is right, yeah, you can see the driveway, it's about 30. Right here, and then you're entering the garage, so the cars are in where my finger is. Yes, and then behind it, there's some additional living space, and then there's living space all to the right. <coughs> so, and then it's, then it's, the, it's fully, f the space is finished above the garage. <laughs> I could sh I bring. I should have brought the architectural plans in so you could see them. I guess I submitted them with it. But this footprint is, is way different than that, and larger. Much larger. Now, in the new one, Paul, you don't need the retaining walls, or are they still there? Uh, these on the Brad Holmes wetlands area. Is that the area you're talking about, or? I'm trying to figure out if these are the retaining walls. No, there's still a retaining wall there. There's actually a little bit. Yeah, well, that, that's the retaining wall down Coming here. Coming down here like this, this whole thing is a retaining wall. But that's what but, but that's not, what these are. But not the same. See, this is the whole thing isn't on this plan. There was a, a pretty good-sized retaining wall in the original plan right. that was approved. But the elevations, uh, landscaping elevations are different on the front of the new house. That, that, that's, and and, and that was retreat. Michael Blute's big issue. He, he was a, the elevations were. No, they haven't, how often we they, they, they haven't changed. Frequently. They haven't changed much at all. It's all with less than a foot change, a foot or less. It's the, the amount of fill on the existing is very similar on both plans. Right, they're close. I'm not. Except you're not, you don't yet. you don't have a three car driveway right in the front of the property. That's that's gone in the plan. The second plan. You don't have that big driveway out front close to the, where the wetlands are. So that's much more green space out front now. So the driveway, where, where the driveway widens is on the rear, which is away from the wetlands. The building itself <laughs> acts as a buffer to the wetlands. Um, so that, that seemed like a... A plus for this one. I, I don't know how we could consider that a minor modification. I agree. Well, I, I, I mean, that's going to be our decision, but again, the, the grading is not significantly different. 
the, the house obviously has a different footprint and the driveway's in a different location. Do you have an additional retaining wall along the front? Yeah, Bob added that. I'm not 100% sure why he needed it there. There's a natural retaining wall in the front that's a, a mound of ledge there between the 25 foot no disturbed and um, I'm not sure we really need that wall there, but. Well, I historically there but was a, a lot of discussion and there were several issues about the elevation from this site. Uh, and I think Michael Blue went through several different iterations insisting that the elevations listed on the plan be changed and they were. And, and did, I, I, don't, I don't know how this is, could be construed as a minor alteration or modification. Um, is, Bob's not available. Um, he had a conflict tonight, but um, he can come back to the next meeting or. Bob, my recommendation is so we don't linger over this too long is that uh, I'd like to see proof of the filing of the easement, recording of the easement. Sure. Uh, I'd like to have some explanation from Bob as to the changes here because they don't appear to be minor to me. So what type of issues uh, would most concern you as far as changes? Um, well, the obvious difference in size is gonna change all of the roof runoff and you're right next to the 25 foot non-disturbance zone. So the change in impervious surface is significant, which is gonna create runoff issues. And when you're that close to the wetlands, you've gotta have a plan that, we, we don't have any well, you know, runoff calculations. I understand we, we could provide those for you, but if you also consider you had a three uh, car garage was on the front, you had a three uh, car wide driveway that uh, was pretty significant as far as impervious, uh, which you don't have anymore. So now that's all landscaped. Well, I'd like to see the calculations for exactly sure. what the change in impervious yeah, is. Yeah, I just, I just want to okay. put together the information you're looking for, so I'm just trying to determine that. Right. Is there any other issues that you see that might stand out? Well, the retaining walls, that, that seems to have been changed, and I, we need some explanation as to why they've been moved. Sure, okay. Paul, well, could we have a larger plan to, this one's sure. a little hard to read. Yeah, I'll, I'll provide colored plans next Thank time. Thank you, too. that'd be great. I know it's difficult to read it without the color sometimes. Thank you. So I, if, you know, to, if, would that change your calculus if, uh, if the impervious hadn't changed any significant way uh, on the site and uh, the grading in general was similar with less than a foot of change? Uh, a foot of, of grading is fairly significant. So we've got grading changes, we've got, um, we've got impervious surface changes, we've got a significant runoff calculation. Need. Uh, we've got, I'm, I'm stuck on these retaining walls because there was so much controversy over the different elevations that were plotted out here. And we've yeah, got all these plans that are voided. Most of them were voided because we had a, a real dispute over what the elevations were. And now we're getting another elevation change. And I, I don't understand why the approved retaining walls have been changed. I'm not 100% sure why they've been changed. They're not very high walls. They're looking at the grading around them, though, um, at least in the ones in the front. But uh, we can provide that information. Sure. Okay. And, and I'd like to see that. I think you know, mostly the, the total work was that Michael was looking for related to the uh, existing conditions. There wasn't so much uh, post construction. Right. I, think, I think you're right. And that's what took time, and Bob collected it and made it more accurate, added information, and, and then we got to a point where Michael was satisfied with it. I, I think you are correct. Yep. <coughs> Okay, well, right. we'll, uh, we'll work on that information and get that to you, then also proof of the uh, 
driveway easement was recorded. Okay, good. All right, good. Then we'll continue this until November with your assent? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you. A quick break. This, that one is, that's yours, right? That's right. This I gave you one okay. of those from the package. Yeah. 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 One of those. those. Point. Yes. Kathy, I don't want to mess up this. Okay. <laughs> I guess they end up too. But I think this all goes together. I believe I've got everything back. Well, it's, I'll put that in there, even if it's mine. Okay, yeah, it wait. is. It, that is. Uh, I think that's everything. Yes. Recess for a short period of time, please. Can you take a record to the camera? We need to take the adjournment for five minutes and then let us know. Yes, thank, thank you. you.